Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Greenway Football, where the Abbott and Green Wave will now play host to the Canton Bulldogs here in the second of the Green Wave, second game of the Green Wave season. My name is Sean Riley. With me today is our special guest color commentary, Chris Nagel. VIP status today, Sean. You got it. Here come the Bulldogs onto the field right now. This is actually the first game to be uh, played by Canton right now. Abington, of course, the second game after a tough defeat against Duxbury. The Green Wave, I think, are ready for the Bulldogs. We played them last year in a really exciting game at the Bulldogs' home field. And, Chris, this will be a good test to see how Abington bounces back from a tough loss against a very tough opponent. First loss in a year, Sean. Um, the, Dux the Duxbury game, 20-13. to 13, Could have gone Abington's way. But, as you said, Sean, it's a test of their medal. See how they're going to bounce back and respond. It's going to be a fun game this afternoon. We're introducing the team now coming down through the stadium. It's a special 4 o'clock start because of uh, Triple E concerns. And uh, on the scoreboard, we're proud to note that on the, under the word Super Bowl champions, Abington has had a good fortune to now add the year 2012 to the previous 2002 and 2005 Super Bowl championships. But this is a new year. These kids all know it. You know, we graduated a great group of 15, 15 seniors. Um, but already we've seen some people really step up early in the season. And I, I, I like to see, I, I, I think we're going to see a kind of breakout game for some guys tonight. Halpin had a tremendous game against Duxbury in the fullback position. I don't think, Chris, you could have asked for a better offensive line performance. Absolutely. The offensive line is strong. A couple of minor mistakes, Sean. That's what brought them down. I think the green wave is ready to go. The senior leadership, Matty Whalen, is the, the captain of the team, number 51. And I think we have game captains today, too. And a very strong, powerful um, uh, leadership group, the seniors. Very proud of those kids. I've known them for a long time, and they're going to do very well this year, I believe. Keep an eye on number 36, Sean Donovan, sophomore running back. And uh, he had a whale of a game. He was really worrying Duxbury on, on defense, how quick he was, how quickly he hits the hole. And uh, I think also keep an eye on uh, Vinnie Picardi, number 21. He, Picardi had some outstanding catches against Duxbury, including a big touchdown catch near the end of the game where he got clocked, didn't get up, and come to find out it wasn't because he got clocked, it's because he, he basically cramped up while, when he landed. Uh, we had a lot of cramping problems in the last game because of the, the heat. Although it was a cool night, it was still warm. And today, being a 4 o'clock start, is a very warm day. It's about 80 degrees. It's humid out here. It's very humid. So we're on, both teams are going to have to try to keep hydrated as best as possible. We're going to have a special um, ceremony before the game and also at halftime. Today is September 12th, the day after the anniversary, of course, of September 11th. The captains going to midfield for the Green Wave. John April, number 74, number 66, Steve Manning, and Matt Whale, number 51. we got Frankie Powers, number 36. For Canton, looks like number uh, 57. That's Delianos Dan, uh, sorry, no, that's Trevor Ruane. 21. 21 would be Matt Bagley, he's one of your captains. Of course, the four captains. And okay, guys, welcome to 18 would be Brian Hagen, a junior captain and a quarterback. Referee Magnarelli's got his microphone on talking to the team for the coin toss. We're also fortunate to have the color guards here from the Abington Legion and the Abington VFW, I believe it is. And at, at halftime, we will also be dedicating the new Memorial Gate, Memorial Gate entrance, which is uh, part of a legacy gift for the tri We'll talk more about that later, and of course at halftime. Yeah. 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 the results of the coin toss. Looks like the Bulldogs will receive the opening kick. They're going to defend against the north end zone. There is a pretty much a swirling wind here. Pretty much blowing, blowing right to left across the television screen. But it's not a, a direct up. I think you can get a punt high in the air. We're going to listen into Tom Dion now, our public address announcer. Represents the following organizations. The Lewis B. Dorsey American Legion Post 112. The U.S. Veterans Vietnam Era Post 2, Sergeant Richard A. Fitz Chapter Abington. Ladies and gentlemen, as we recognize our country's National Day of Service and Remembrance yesterday on 9-11, let us remember 
the service of our veterans, and let us, uh, let us renew our national promise to fulfill the sacred obligation to our veterans and their families who have sacrificed so much so that we can live free. We ask that you also pay tribute and honor to the 2,977 people who died from the September 11th attack on our country, especially Abington resident Jeff Coombs, whose life was tragically cut short on Flight 11. And now please join together and share a moment of silence in honor and in memory of Master Sergeant Joseph Colantoni, a proud combat veteran of the Korean War who served our town as veteran agent for 17 years, an Abington High School graduate, Gregory Jasinskis, who went on to serve his country as a member of the National Guard, U.S. Marines, and as a Massachusetts State Trooper, and Jeff Coombs. Thank you. We ask that you please remain standing and please join me in taking a moment to remember the lives of Abington's Mark Chirokas, and Tom McIsaac, who we recently lost before the start of this football season. Both Mark and Tom were Abington High School graduates and former Greenway football players. And they both gave back to their school system and our children for many years. Mark Chirokas was a 20-year employee of the town of Abington, serving as our park and recreation superintendent, while also coaching Greenway football for 25 years. Tom McIsaac volunteered his time as a coach for Abington High School football for 15 years, and was an inspirational and motivational friend to many Abington residents throughout the years. At this time, members of the family of Mark Chirokas and Tom McIsaac will release balloons in memory of Mark and Tom. Thank you. And now, please remove your hats and join the Abington High School Band under the direction of Mr. Charlie Blanchett as we honor America with the playing of our national anthem. <laughs> That was a nice ceremony pregame there, and uh, we all miss Mark Chirokas and Tom McIsaac and Jeff Coombs, Joe Colantoni, and Greg Desinskis. They were all great members of this community. Um, I, I'm glad, and I think it's appropriate that we took the time to recall them and to remember them and to honor them as we start this home season here for Greenway football. Absolutely, Sean. It's a nice tribute to all of them, and as you said, they were meant so much to the community, and they're all missed. Fans at home, you may probably notice the change in voice. All of a sudden, during the national anthem, Chris Nagel was pushed out of the press box, and <laughs> Kevin Whalen just bullied himself onto the microphone. I, I, I'm just, I'm shocked and appalled at the behavior. Well, I was here on time, four o'clock, Sean, right on time. Oh, this is, we're not going to hear the end of this. So we're playing 11 minute quarters here because it is a non league game. Canton is part of the Habermark League. They're actually a Division Four team, Abington, Celsius League Lodge, and the Division Five. Sean Donovan will be doing the kickoff honors for the Green Wave. Kevin, welcome aboard. Well, glad to be here, Sean. Back deep for the Canton Bulldogs, number nine, it looks like, Derek Harris. And I knew you have some special co uh, contacts with the city of or the town of Canton. Absolutely. My wife is a Bulldog. So uh, graduated from was, Canton High was School. Was a Bulldog. Right, was a Bulldog. Graduated class of 79 from Canton High. Donovan to kick. 
A left nice hand left foot kicker. Wow, right, about right at the six yard line. Run right up the middle and he's gonna be hit as he crossed the 25 and taken down as he approaches the 32 yard line. That was number nine, Derek Harris, the junior. Well, Donovan's really getting some leg into his uh, kicks as we yeah. said last week as well, Sean. All the way down to the seven, some nice high kick as well. So nice job by Donovan really putting that ball back there and doing it on a consistent basis so far this year. Well, as you know, Sean Donovan was a uh, excellent standout soccer player as a youngster, also an excellent standout football player, and he elected to go with the, his football career here, and we're thankful he did. So here come the Bulldogs. Brian Hagen, number 18, should be the quarterback, according to what, what the coach is telling me. Trying to pitch around the left side, but there's Quinlan and company trying to take him down. Yeah, big loss there, about a five-yard loss. Nice job by Quinlan. Well, some Manning was out there as well. Bunch of Greenway players. It was Reynolds on the on the carry, number four for the Bulldogs. Picardi, Manning, and Quinlan they give credit to. Still getting used to all these numbers. They yeah. mixed up the numbers quite a bit from last year. So. And they've actually changed some for this game. Manning's wearing number 66 for I today's saw that game. was a lot number from last year, so that makes it easy for me. That's right, but I don't think that's a permanent change, though, so we'll see as the, as the season develops. They're actually waiting for some new shirts to come in on delivery. Three men in the backfield, now behind Hagen. Second and along, 14. Handed right off. Right the middle, about a yard oh, game. Oh, Quinlan comes up with the ball there. Let's see if they say he stripped him or they're, or they're going to call him down. I don't know if they were. Looks like it's going to be third down. Yeah, ball's marked at a 30. So it'll be third and along 12. One thing we saw last year, last week against Duxbury was an outstanding play of the defensive line. Um, yeah, nice job of the Green Wave last week, Sean. Uh, you know, defensive line and offensive line. I mean, they really were able to move the ball consistently on both sides, you know, ball and really stop them on the defensive side of the ball. You know, especially the second half, the Green Wave did a nice job of interrupting their defense. Third and 12 now for Hagen and company. You got wideouts to each side. Put a man in motion, looking Fun to back. throw. Gets a big pressure in the backfield. Now Hagen running for his life at the 25. Turns got some field. room. Well, 35, then running out of bounds, well short of the first down. Well, he made something happen there. He was able to pick up about seven yards there for Hagen, there, number 18 for the Bulldogs. But just going to bring up a fourth down, fourth and about five there for the, uh, the Canton Bulldogs. Good pursuit there. Sarasani hustling out there. Nice job of Green Wave defense on the first set, getting a nice stop there on the first down, Sean, making it a long and, uh, you know, second and uh, long. And Green Wave doing a nice job, stopping him on second down, putting him into a long and third situation. You know, it's always tougher when you're getting a third and short. They can do a multiple different things, but you put them in third and long, you know they're going to pass. Green Wave did a nice little rush there. The quarterback was able to evade the rush a little bit, but he had to run, so nice job by the Green Wave D. Donovan and Bacardi back deep now for the Green Wave standing about their own 34, 35-yard line. High snap. It's going to be line nice. drive coming right up. Okay. Picardi. Picardi takes the 36 and pitches it back. The He's Donovan, got some room. Donovan down the near sideline. Donovan going to be one man and taking down a nice tackle in the overfield by Joe Byers, number 44. But a good pickup and a good return by the Green Wave. It almost looked like Picardi was the shortstop or the second baseman tossing it for the double play there back to Donovan. Nice job there, about a 20 yard. Uh, so 37, 37 down to the 41. So. Uh oh, Kevin's doing math. 13 and 9 is 22, Sean. <laughs> so 22 yard return there for the Green Wave. And good field position for the Green Wave in uh, almost Well, we say this so many times, Canton. Sean. Yeah, when, you're, you know, when you have a short field, we saw that last week. Abington was always successful when they had a short field. When you put them into an 80 yard situation, it's very difficult to keep a, uh, a drive going over 80 yards. So Green Wave is great field position. Give to Freeman. Jeff, Freeman left side over the 40, inside the 35. Al Freeman turns the corner, picks up the first down inside the 30 yard line. Banks picks up 10 plus. Right, nice job. And, you know, he just looks explosive this year, Sean. You know, and that's what they're going to need out of uh, Freeman now. Yeah. I mean, he's going to need a little bit of explosiveness. He's really going to have to step up. As we all know, Kilmaine is up for the season here. You know, the, probably the number one back. And it looks like from what we saw last week and this week, you know, with Halpin, you know, uh, Freeman, and also um, Donovan, it's really going to have a, an exciting year the back, in the backfield this year for the Green Wave. Halpin, the fullback, lined up behind his quarterback, trying to put a man in motion, putting Freeman in motion. Donovan in the backfield with Halpin. They give Donovan right side. Big hole for Donovan. Donovan in the 25. Donovan going to the corner. Donovan is not catching. That's a touchdown. Man of Muskegon. 
A 27-yard touchdown run by the Sophomore. Wow, he got the Jets on it. You know what? For some reason, Sean, I think he's just faster than people think because yeah. he just caught that kid out in the flat, totally flat-footed. He was out there, and the kid looked like he was ready to break down a tackle, and he just ran by him. So great running there by Sean Donovan. We thought we'd see it, and there it is very early on in the game. And Dunneman's going to line up for the well, PAT kick with Brian Dwyer holding. Impressive offensive uh, play there last right there, Sean. Both uh, plays, you know, Freeman got about a 13-yard run, and then Dunneman finishing it up. Boy, just wow. drilled that into Brookfield Road. He had a little bit of wind. <laughs> there was a little wind aided, I will say that. But that would have been good from about 50. Yep. Louis Russell's uh, record might be in jeopardy today, Sean. I, I think it is. That would be a good thing. You know? Holy cow. So the Green Wave on the board, they strike first. Two big plays, seven big points, and they'll bring out the kickoff team once again. You know, I really think that last year, Sean, that I really think that last year in the regular season that the Canton game probably was the best game of the year. Yeah. That was a really hard-fought game. Both teams really came down. Abington pulled away from it a little bit at the end, but it really was just a really hard-fought game, and it was a great game to watch last year. So I really was looking forward to a great game today as well with these two teams. And I talked to the coach. Um, earlier, uh, the Canton coach, and he was nervous about playing in Abingdon this year. Last year, they had a very strong team. Remember Camacho, because the tight end, right. he made a was, great diving some, grab. He was making catches all over the field, right? They but, had some really electrifying players last year. I want to thank our sponsors for uh, all the fall sports this year at Abingdon High School. The Depot Restaurant on Railroad Street, Midway Auto on Route 123, Abington Bank, the law offices of Sean Riley and Ed Riley, Bemis Drug in North Abingdon Center, Deanne's Restaurant, Glenn LaPointe and family, Old Town Real Estate, the Quayley Funeral Home, Bernie Brannigan on uh, the Chiropractor right on Route 18, Dave Nisby at Dave Nisby, uh, Mike and Dave's Barbershop, and the Greenway Boosters. Well, hopefully the hydration team is going to be in full force. The <laughs> weather is about 85 degrees out there today. So Line drive is going to bounce nice over bounce. the first receiver, over, oh, the, over the second receiver into the end zone. He's going to... Wow. They wave... He didn't even get a chance to run it out, but we'll start it at the 20-yard line. It's a little different. Interesting. Well, he was starting to kneel down, so I think, you know. It, <laughs> but he didn't. I know. I don't. I guess that's, uh, you know. He just wanted to save a few seconds off the clock there. Well, no time goes off the clock because. Was it well, right out of the end zone? I don't know. Referee Magnarelli is talking right now, but no matter, it'll be on the 20-yard 20 20 line. line. He was going to do it anyways. It was his intent. <laughs> it was. A, it would have been a wise decision. It would have been. The Greenway players were right down there, and that was kind of a, a, a funny kick there. It took a couple of great bounces there for the Green Wave and really put him in a spot where the only choice he had was to, uh, you know, Sean, it was a huge advantage what we haven't talked about today, though. The wind is really even picking up even since that. Yeah. We saw that great extra point try there, uh, uh, um, conversion there. But the wind is really coming right into the face of Canton here. So it's going to really play, I think, a, a big uh, – it's going to play a big factor here because it's going to be difficult to throw into that wind as we go along today. Okay, well, we did talk about it early today, but you just weren't here. So uh, uh, It's only 4 o'clock, Sean. <laughs> I was here at 4. <laughs> hey, traffic on the Southeast Expressway. I can only do so much. I want to thank Chris Nagel for uh, helping us get started. And, uh, Chris, I promise you we're doing a game together whether Kevin's there or not. <laughs> he's always ready to go. The president of the Greenway Boosters does it all. Flips burgers, sells 50-50. Right now he's actually... He's, spotting for our public address now. So here we go now, first and 10 at the 20 yard line. Tenacious Green Wave D out there wearing their home green uniforms. Getting the stakes set. Oh, St uh, Steve Wakelin and company over there running the stakes. I can see uh, so, uh, Mr. O'Donovan, Mr. Wakelin. Who's hiding over there? Probably usually Mr. Uh, Reardon. Give right up the middle, pick up about two or three. Give him three on the play. Nice. I want to remind you at halftime, if you stay tuned right after the cheerleaders presentation, we're going to have a uh, special presentation from the Abingdon Tricentennial Committee to the Memorial Trustees, the uh, ceremonial key to the new Memorial Field gate. It's a beautiful piece of work. Well, it really looks nice together. down here. The, uh, you know, the DPW crew, Park and Rec, yeah. have done a nice job. The field looks great. The track looks great. It really looks nice down here. Jack Kane and Kenan Cannell, all the guys were down here earlier today. Fixing up the track, everything that needed to be done. Second and seven. Give left side a quick dive. Nice job to wing once again. And Quinlan quickly, uh, the 80, number 85 for the green wave on the tackle. So making it third and third and about five here yep. for the Bulldogs. They tried to throw it last time at third and five, and there was a big rush that made Hagen you know, basically run for his life. We'll see what happens here as John April comes to the side and take a breather. 
Number 85, big Jake Quinlan. I think they're really going to have to get, obviously, get a lot more um, rotation in, Sean, this week with the heat. I mean, it's very hot out here. It's, right. uh, you know, obviously just 4 o'clock in the afternoon, so it's still very warm. See if they go for a quick hitter, a, a, you know, quick pass, knowing that the green I think it's going to be rush. hard to throw deep. They're no, going to go right in the middle. Right in the middle. Belly Nothing handoff. doing. He oh. spins away, though. Let's I see. If, ooh, they're going to give him the first, Sean. Yeah. He will. He wow. just got over. Just fell over to 30 out line for the first down. Right. Wow. So they'll move the stakes for the Canton Bulldogs. That was a nice job. It faked me a little bit out. Yeah. I thought it was weighing up the middle once again, and he ended up giving it out to, uh, I didn't even see who had the ball there, but uh, nice job of them. A uh, little trickery there. Green Wave, I think, really went for the fake as well. DeAndre Hilton checks in for the Green Wave. We're in number 22, trying to get some of these names and numbers out there for you. Looks like we got Josh Reed, number 19, and Picardi uh, playing safeties for the Green Wave. Hilton's on the near side um, quarterback. The pitch coming to the near side. Oh, good job by who's that? Sarasani with a big takedown in the big. backfield. Sarasani, that's a huge play right there. That's big a negative good thing. play. Yeah, big negative play on first down. That's exactly what you're looking for out of your defense. It's good. It's a good thing Sarasani was able to shoot through there because the uh, blocking backs had done a pretty good job of, of trying to seal the uh, the end, and the running back had a you know the opportunity to get around it, but Sarasani put a stop to that. Yeah, the, 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 the running back there for the uh, Bulldogs really tried to give him a straight arm there, but Sarasani's arms were just a little bit oh. too long. Was able to get in there, get the reach in there. And Pull him on down. You'll hear more of Sarasani during the basketball season also. So here we go now. Second and 13 back at the 27-yard line. Hagen under his center. Puts a man in motion once again. They pitch. pitch. It's to Reynolds. Reynolds trying to turn a corner. Jumps up over to 30, but taken down. Yeah, got a nice little stop there. But number 51 for the green wave in on the tackle. That's Matt Whalen. Matt Whalen did a nice job there. So picked up, a, yeah, I'd say five or six on the play. So brings up a third and eight. Still third and long. Manning, number 66, takes a break as April goes in. Cole Jansen in there, number 55, and they're in the, working hard in the middle of the defense. So bring up third and eight at the 32-yard line. Five and a half minutes left to go here in the first quarter. 7-0 Green Wave lead. Obviously, it's a, you know being a great oh, field spot. position, Sean, when you start off at the 20, it really gives you defense that really deep field to play with. They're going they right up the it, middle. Up, yep. Right up the middle of them to wing, number 45. He's going to push the forward. pile for the first down. Get great extra effort by Wing and his teammates there. Yeah, they just pushed the pile. That's what we saw the Green Wave he doing was, last yeah, time. Yeah, and he was stopped two or three yards short there, two shots. So that's a nice job by the Bulldogs of really just getting in there and pushing it. You know, of course, it's a little bit easier when you're on the offense because you've got people behind the play. Here we go now, first and 10 for the Green Wave, uh, for the Bulldogs at the 42-yard line. Bulldogs have yet to get into Green Wave territory over the 50-yard line. Hagen will move in the backfield. Nothing doing there. Oh, he kept it. Hagen kept it there. She's number 78 for the Green Wave, made a huge hit there on the backfield. But it was the wrong guy. Brian O'Donovan really shot the gap yeah. and did a nice job of getting in the backfield, creating a little havoc. But he was Hagen was able to keep it and pick up about four on the play. Well, that's what you're supposed to do. If they fake it to him, you take him down. Four minutes, 20 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Jeez, O'Donovan looked like a shot out of a cannon there, Sean. Really kind of got right across that line of scrimmage, right into the backfield. Second and six at the 46. This drive started at the 20-yard line. The second possession of the game for Canton. First one was three and out. Here come the, the water boys are now here. They just, because of the uh, early start to the game, some of our water boys had to get out of school, oh. get home and get changed and get here to the game. So now we're here with a, almost a full complement of water boys. First things first, you know. Timeout being called on the sidelines. Canton wants to think about it. Well, we saw, you know, it's one of the things it looks like Can's really keeping the ball on the ground here, Sean. So this should be a really quick game, a first half at least, because they're really kind of trying to just, you know, keep the ball. They do that uh, option kind of um, offense where, you know, the spread offense, that's what they're doing out there. So really, they seem to be running around with just like the, the back, the halfback and the fullback. So quarterback doing a lot of keepers as well. I want to remind you some upcoming events for the Avenue Greenway Boosters. Parents, Saturday, October 19th at the KSC Hall will be the Booster Bash, an adult costume party to get ready for Halloween. Saturday, October 19th. Tickets are available right now. $20 per person. Costumes are required. 
t- uh, you can talk to Karen Ridden, Ann Kearns, myself, or any member of the Boosters for more information. But start reserving your costumes right now, Kev. I know I'm sure you've been thinking about what you're going to wear, and I can't wait to see what it is. Also, homecoming weekend for the Green Wave will be Saturday, September 28th. There is no football game next weekend, the weekend of the 20th, 21st. Green Wave have a bye that weekend. So the next game after this will be home Saturday the 28th, 4 o'clock game against the Randolph High School, first time we played them. But since, earlier in the day... the 70s. Yeah, at noontime, the boys' soccer team will play right here at Memorial Field against the Hull Pirates. At 2 o'clock, the girls' soccer team will play right here at Memorial Field against the Hull Pirates. And then at 4 o'clock, we'll have the football game against Randolph. So it'll be an entire afternoon and evening of Greenway Sports right here at Memorial Field on Saturday, September 28th. Well, let's Bring hope, the kids. Let's hope for a free, Sean, so we can play some Friday night football. You betcha. You know, we need a, a little triple E action going down on down here, so we got to play in the afternoon. And if you're looking for the schedules, they are available uh, around town, but also on www.miaa.net. When you open that page, go to the top right, says Member School Look Up, and just click on Abner High School, and you can see all. Click on whatever team you want to see the schedule for. Here we go now. Second and six, handoff right up the middle. Belly handoff is going to be short of the first down and short of midfield. Only well, picked up about two, so it's going to be third and about four here for the uh, Bulldogs. After that Randolph game, we will then go on the road for three weeks. We'll travel to Cohasset on Friday, October 4th, a 7 o'clock night game. And then Friday, October 11th at Norwell, a 7 o'clock night game. And then on Saturday, October 19th, we'll play at Rockland, 3.30. And then we'll come home to play East Bridgewater, which will be the final league game, a Friday night game. Currently scheduled to be Friday night because we're assuming we'll have a frost by then. Friday, October 25th at 7 o'clock here at Memorial Field. The Green Wave's done a nice job of kind of keeping it inside. I want to see if they see what they do here, Sean, but they've done a nice job of trying to uh, keep it, keeping them inside and keeping the edges down. Blitz, so a little right blitz, the there it is. Doing. Nice job by the Green Wave. They get the pile going, though. It's almost like rugby, Sean, when yeah. they're pushing the pile. It's going to bring up a fourth and about two. Right at midfield. Whalen, is, Whalen, number 51 for the Green Wave, making the tackle there. Nice job. I think that was Quinlan who was blitzing from the uh, far side. It goes right to midfield. I mean, they have tried to do a couple times, because, you know, do the Jets of the outside. And the Green Wave, uh, you know, Sarasani and Quinlan, number 85, have both been there for the, for the Green Wave. So they just elected to see that they had a little more success up the middle. They have just picked up a couple. So they're going to go for it, fifth, fourth, and two here. Two minutes, 30 seconds to go here in the first gonna quarter. Think they're just going to try to go offside, Sons? What do you think? No, I think they're going to do what they've been doing. They go right up the middle and try to move that scrum pile. they got three men in the backfield. Tight formation right behind the quarterback, Hagan. They do hand up to the full. No, they do it. it. At the line, down. brought down short. King was smacked by Manning. Manning, number 66. Who else is on that pile? It's like, ape. who's that? It's O'Donovan, number 78. O'Donovan and, and uh, Manning, Manning with a big tandem there. Wow. Big, huge play, and it'll be a first down for the Green Wave. Now they're doing he had no, you know, and that's what you got to do. He went right down low, took out his legs from underneath him, so there was no moving the pile at all. He was just get, picking up about a yard there. Nice job by Manning just taking the legs right up from underneath him. So, I mean, as much as before, they had, like, you know, the pile start pretty much two or three yards short of the first down. They were able to just keep it moving and pick up that first down. So nice job. Green Wave, great field position once again, starting at their own 49. So here comes the Green Wave of the eye backfield. Wide out to each side for the quarterback, Brian Dwyer. Dwyer looking to throw, drops back. He's going to the near side. He's got, got Donovan wide open. Donovan He's got him. He's got him. Touchdown, field. Man of Muskegon. A 51-yard scoring strike wow. from Brian Dwyer to Sean Donovan. His second touchdown of the day, the second time he touched the ball. Well, you know, the Green Wave almost, I think, Sean, right there. They were using that. They saw that almost as a turnover. You get that ball at mid- midfield. Right there, up by a score with 2:01 in the first quarter. Green Wave, you know, going for the throat there, and then really just kind of going for it all right there. Wide open was Donovan. Dwyer did a nice job. Great protection up front. Great job by the Green Wave offense. Almost sounded Canadian there a little bit. Offense. <laughs> 2:01 on the clock. We line up for the kick. The left footer kick at Donovan. Good job by Dr- Dwyer on the hold. Holy cow! <laughs> I don't know, Sean. That's, I know, that's a huge kick. That's great that, to see. You don't see that, that often. That would be, I mean, he's only a sophomore, so we'll get a chance to see that. But this thing would be good from 45. Yeah, yeah four, three. 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 Three offensive plays, two touchdowns, and a total of 92 yards total offense. Well, now we know why Canton's running the ball. They want to take clock time off the clock, Sean. That's right. I saw uh, Sean Donovan's mother before the game and I told him told her that he'd have at least two touchdowns today I didn't know he'd do it in two plays 
The 201 on the clock. And the Green Wave will kick off once again here. Well, you know, Kevin, I don't think the taste of that Duxbury loss tasted good to the Green Wave, and they're taking it out on the Bulldogs right now. Well, you know, there's somewhat a young team. I mean, you got some kids that have been around for a while, but they're still a young team. I mean, you look at, you know, Donovan's only a sophomore. Yep. You know, Dwyer's, what, a, a junior, junior? Junior. So, I mean, you still got, you know, Ridden's a junior. I mean, a lot of juniors on this team. Nice boot once again. Coming down to the four-yard line. It's bobbled there by Harris. Picks it up now. He's, he's in trouble. Uh-oh. He's going to get hit at the 10 and 9. Still on his feet. Now knocked down and pushed back wow. by a green wave of Great shirts. Great pressure. You know, that got caught up in the jet stream, and that thing was just sailing away from him. It was going to be tough for him to pick up. And it just kept on pushing. Donovan, with the left foot kicker, was just kind of kicked it across. And really, just the wind just took it right away from Harris. Wow, great, great thing for the Green Wave, getting great field position, uh, defensive field position here. All the way back at the nine, they're going to start. You're right. 91 yards away from scoring. Good pursuit, too, by the Green Wave there. Aiden Crawley getting some uh, kudos for being one of the tacklers there. there. Happening Green Wave cheerleaders down there in front of us. They'll be performing at halftime. We'll read you their names off later when we have a moment. I want to remind you also that Sunday, October 6th, will be the door-to-door -door drive for the Edmund Greenway Boosters. We'll talk more about that in just a few minutes. All right, here come the Bulldogs now with wideouts to each side. Again, three men in the backfield behind their quarterback. Hagen. Handed off, nothing doing. Flag down. I don't know if that's flag or a... Uh, right thought I it was a being, being a marker. Maybe, yeah. But that's you'd see that if there was a fumble, but I didn't right. see the ball loose. They give him one yard of... Of, uh, yeah, what's the, the, what's the, what's the Beanie Bay? Yeah, it the was. Bay? Oh, I don't know why, but they gave a one-yard advance on the play. It'll be second and nine, nine at the 10. Screen wave, you know, in their basic 5-3 defense right now, Sean, so they've got five up linemen. And five big up linemen with some very qualified uh, linebackers in there. They got, Actually, it's like say that they're in a 4-5 now, Sean. Yeah. Donnell Leon, number 35, four, five, number 32, Al Freeman in there in the middle. We've got five linebackers. we got Papadopoulos and King in the backfield. There goes Papadopoulos in motion. They give to King up the middle. He gets hit at the linebacker stage. He gets st st yeah, stood up at the 13-yard line. It looked like he had a little bit of room, and I'll tell you, that yeah. just like shut right down, and I think uh, Freeman was in on that tackle. And number 35 also was on the tackle. That's a Donnell Leon for the Green Wave as well. Cole Jansen, number 55, I believe, also made the hit. So Jansen, good job by Cole. A sophomore as well, right? Yeah. Is this a sophomore? No, Cole, sorry. Cole is a junior. His Cole's brother junior. Scott is a senior. senior. Okay. So it brings down a third and a five. Third and five at the 14-yard line. Coach Dave Bohain talking a little extra advice to Brian Hagen, the quarterback. Well, my brother-in-law went to the uh, Canton opening game last week, Sean. They had a, uh, a, a one of their former players is actually suffering from ALS. is a longtime Canton resident. So, uh, it's actually a scrimmage last week because this is it, their first game. Is it, yeah. yeah, they had a scrimmage last week where I think they had a lot of alumni and they might have used it as a fundraiser as well. So it's the end of the first quarter and a great first quarter for the Green Wave, Sean. It is. It was a great, very active and electric first quarter with Donovan scoring with a 27-yard TD run the second play after Freeman picked up. A uh, good chunk of change in the first play from scrimmage. And then the very next time the Green Wave had the ball, it was a scoring strike of 51 yards from Dwyer to Donovan, making it 14 to nothing, three plays, two runs, one throw. want to remind you, uh, once again, we mentioned earlier that on October 6th, Sunday, October 6th, is the Green Wave's door-to-door -door drive, the biggest fundraiser of the year for the Avenue Grand Boost. It's the most important fundraiser. Uh, we need 120 volunteer students. They get booster points to qualify for Letterman's jackets. And we need, also need some drivers, some parent drivers. So if you're available between 12 and 3 on Sunday, October 6th, we could use a few parents to drive the kids to different neighborhoods. You just drop them there. They, they walk around, knock on the doors, and you bring them back to our, our main station, which is the police station. However, this year, under new rules, all the parents who are going to drive need to do a quarry check ahead of time. So we hope that you'll plan pre-plan and uh, you can get a form from our athletic director or from the coaches or anyone on the boosters. We'll get you a form. It'll also be going out via the Greenway Boosters email. But the more parents we have to volunteer, the quicker it goes. It can be done in much less than three hours if we have enough volunteers. 
I know it's it's uh, it's 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 actually a lot of fun. The kids get out there, and so please, you know, help as much as you can. Be much appreciated, and it's a really a huge uh, fundraiser for the Boosters. All the money that's raised goes to all of the Green Wave teams, uh, and so you'll see all of the the boys and girls from all the different teams be uh, knocking on doors, walking and knocking on Sunday, October sixth. Just send in my text to uh, my my Twitter followers, Sean, that it's fourteen nothing out there on the uh, for the good guys. Kevin, you're going to be shocked, but I just signed up for Twitter also. But while you were Twittering, I was talking. I'll have to do mine up later. So here we go now. Third and five from the 14. A shotgun formation. They go for a quick out pad into flat. This Sarasani. Uh, oh, 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 he took his helmet off. Ball, the ball's dead. Ball's dead. Yeah. Oh, too bad because <laughs> the running well, back's helmet fell off them before. But once that happens, though, too, I mean, the green way, the rules. Well, the rules are that you have to stop. So the defense, actually, it's a penalty, I think. So. You know, you got to stop right there. So it's going to be fourth down. But Sarasani did a nice job of getting out there from his defensive end spot into the into that bubble screen area. Yeah. Really was able to kind of put pressure on him and help out. And Al Freeman as well came up and did a nice job of popping him after he got loose a little bit there. James Landers were also there also uh, I think Al out. Freeman was the one that made the, the helmet actually come off. So nice job by Freeman there. So the ball will be marked at the 14-yard line. Green Wave is going to look to have great field position here. Now Canton is kicking with the wind. Right, so they got to be. I, well, I think that, you know, I wouldn't be surprised 35, 40 yard kick, Sean, on this because that is a uh, strong win. We'll see who kicks or how they kick. Going back for the Green Wave, standing right about midfield is Sean Donovan on the far side, Vinnie Bacardi on the near side. Looks like there's some confusion here. Oh, it's the officials, they want to oh. back out. Oh, they're calling them back out. No timeout. No timeout. I don't know. It's maybe 20 second timeout or something. I don't know what it is. Looks like he charged him, but then it looked like he said it was on him. I don't know. Oh, they're charging Canton with a timeout there. I think that's their second timeout. Yes, you get five timeouts and a half. You have, uh, was it three minute and a half timeouts and two 30 second timeouts each half? 10 minutes, 22 seconds left here in the second quarter. Well, the Green Waves defense, I mean, offense has just been so explosive, Sean. It's like, you know, this is exactly what you don't want to do for Canton is to, you know, give them another short field here. The Green Wave's probably going to get the ball at least, you know, on in the Green and the Canton Bulldogs territory once again. So the punt is standing on his own two yard line. Slow snap, but a good snap. Leon putting some nice boot underneath. Pressure on, picked up at the 47 yard line for Donovan. Donovan keeps it now, getting the wall, right He's side. The wall. He's there is nobody there. One man, the punter. Donovan he goes cuts. right he by is. him. Touchdown, man of Muskegon! Sean Donovan, happy birthday. It's not his birthday, but he might as well celebrate because he just cow. went 53 yards. Wow. That's a coming out party, huh? For Sean Donovan today, three TDs. Wow, it, the third time he's touched the ball, the third touchdown he scored, and he now has a 27-yard run, a 51-yard pass, and a 53-yard kick return. And he had a, probably about a 20-yard kick return, too, on the first uh, punt they had, Sean. So really a heck of a day here for Sean Donovan, the sophomore. We line up for the kick. Dwyer awaits the snap. Good snap, ball down. Kick oh. is blocked and no good. Oh. So 20, 20, nothing here, Sean. You know what? The the only play really that had a shot at that was number 44 was Spires. He kind of number for the Bulldogs. He kind of read it and tried to come over, but he broke down and Donovan was already by him by the time he, he got by him. But I he hate broke to say, down there. Sean kind of toyed with him. He came around the corner and he hadn't even shifted into fourth gear yet, and he kind of let 24 even just approach him and then just went right around him. There, there wasn't a chance he was going to get to him. So you're right, Kev, just looking back at the kickoff. Oh, it was actually a punt, right? It was yeah, a punt a, return, the, yeah. The punt to the 37, ran it back to the 41. Picardi, Picardi um, pitched it back to him. He got the ball probably about the 35 and brought it so about, you know, from uh, the 37. So it was like about a 22-yard kick return as well. A punt return, rather. So the Green Wave will be kicking off. You know, and Sean Dunham is not a big kid. I mean, as a sophomore, I, you know, I think what he's probably about 160 pounds. So he's, you know, still a growing kid. So he's going to be something to watch is, you know, enjoy the moment right now. That's for sure. But I'll tell you, he's something special. And anybody who's scouting out this game from other towns are now going to be a little nervous. Here's the kick. It's a nice, nice high, high kick, kick again. once again, coming at the 17 yard line for Canton. 
Even against the wind shot, he had a nice good boot there. Reynolds finally taken down as he crosses the 25. It's probably the best field position they've had all day, the 25. Well, they had the 30, 32 yard line they started out earlier as well. So it's gonna be the 27 yard line, first and 10 here for the Bulldogs. So green wave defense been up to the challenge so far, Sean. You know, I think what you want to do is you really want to kind of finish out this half strong, really not give them anything, you know, and that's that's the hot thing. When you get up by three touchdowns now is focusing, you know, still doing your job on defense because, you, you know, you think you can take your foot off the gas a little bit here. That's right, Kevin. If the Green Wave can kind of keep the pressure on in the second half, we might be able to see a lot of the, uh, the secondary squad come out there, get some good quality playing time in here early in the season. Hagen, first and 10. They give belly hand off to King, Wing. number 45. Kevin Wing. Pretty good running back wing. You know, he's been getting some good pickups, three, four, five yards. He's definitely like he's the bull in the china shop there, Sean. He's yep. a big boy and can keep those legs turning. He's done a nice job there for Canton so far today. So picked up about four. You know, the key too, Sean, I mean, as much as the Green Wave, Green Wave has really had short fields all day right. long offensively. So it's like, you know, you, when you give up a big play on top of that, it's not a good uh, thing for the Bulldogs. So be. Uh, Second and six from the 31. Geez, you look at how many players Wide they have. Seat side. They do have quite a few players over there, the, the Bulldogs do. Yeah, they have over about 54 on their roster. The Green Wave have 38 on their roster. Timeout called by the Bulldogs as they want to think about it here with the uh, second down coming up. Again, I want to remind you, on uh, there is no game for the Green Wave. They have a bye week on the weekend of Friday the 20th, Saturday the 21st. Our next game will be Saturday, September 28th, home here at Memorial Field against Randolph High School. It's a game. It's a day full of Abbott and Green Wave sports here at Memorial Field. It's homecoming weekend, so they'll have uh, soccer at noon, which will be the boys' soccer team against Hull. Soccer at 2 o'clock, girls' soccer against Hull, and then football at 4 o'clock. Uh, I will be Abington versus Randolph, all right here at Memorial Field. So we hope you'll come down, bring the family, and support Abington Green Wave Sports and all three of the Green Wave teams. I want to congratulate both the girls and boys soccer team who just both had uh, victories over Cohasset. Uh, some incredible games against Cohasset. It's usually a powerhouse in the Celsius League. The Green Wave girls uh, had a great game. They were down three to nothing. And then uh, Magnuson scored twice and then Alexa LaPointe scored her first varsity goal to tie up the game, and then Magnuson made the hat trick to get give the Green Wave a 4-3 to three victory. I think that's the first uh, generation, first of the second generation, of, or third generation, or fourth generation, because you had the grandfather, Glenn, yep. now uh, Glenn Jr.'s kids, and now, wow. Alexa's so. very talented, as is Autumn. Well, a little confusion in the Canton yeah. offenses. Green Wave moving around. Second down, six. They do it put in like motion. a little movement there. I don't know. The give will get breaks through the lines. The second man throw balls That's loose, but I think he was down. Yeah, he was. He was down. That was definitely because. Yeah. yeah, he's causing it down. It was down. Running backs down at the 41 yard. That'd be a first down for the Bulldogs. Halpin made number 33 for the Green Wave. Made the tackle. Sean Riley and Kevin Whaley bringing, bringing this happening Green Wave football action. This is the second uh, game of the year. If you look at the schedules this year, the MIA has completely changed the playoff system, so nobody knows who anybody's playing the first three weeks of November. Those three weeks are reserved for playoff games and also for non-playoff games for those teams who don't qualify for the playoffs. You'll learn a lot more about that as the season goes on. First and 10 out, the 41-yard line. Hagen looking to throw. The south ball puts it up in the air. Flows going to be picked. Be picked oh! Up. And where? Oh, it's caught! It it's was caught! caught! By Aiden Colley, number nine. What concentration by Colley. That ball was floating in the air. Got caught up there. Aiden was coming down. It got popped. The ball was still loose on his stomach there. And Aiden had the wherewithal to just grab it with two hands. Never touched the ground. Well, there was great pressure on the green wave. He was not able to follow through, Sean. He was hit as soon as he released the ball. Hagen was in the nice job of the green wave putting pressure on him. So when he threw, it really just didn't have anything behind it. We're going to see Ridden in here for the green wave at quarterback. Number 19. Josh Ridden. Green Wave have the great benefit of having two really talented quarterbacks this year. Uh, two different styles of quarterback. Josh, you'll see, is a pocket quarterback with a cannon of an arm. 
And Dwyer can do some shake and bake. A little Doug Flutie-esque out there, Shine. Yeah, can, he's can, more of a... work some magic. He's a scrambler. But let's see what we do here. First and 10 at the 42-yard line. Reardon hands off to Freeman. Freeman. Freeman trying to get around the corner. Freeman, though, gets hung up. Does a good job just breaking away from Yanni Papadopoulos, who got to him first. Picked... Probably we get back to the line down. of scrimmage. Uh, just right about the line of scrimmage, maybe. Nope. Right there. Yeah, he tried to bounce it out, see if he could get anything more. You know, when he went outside there and there was nothing doing. Kim well, did a nice job of containing on the outside. Well, one of the things I thought I, I noticed in the Duxbury game where both um, Halpin and Freeman were most effective is when they just hit that hole going. Even if the hole sometimes wasn't there, just hit where you're we're supposed to go. It, right. And don't try to dance around and dance well, outside. Well, the quick hits always, right. obviously, always, because that's where you're most likely to have a little bit of daylight. And that's where your linemen expecting to go, so they're trying to make those blocks in those areas. Give right side help and help and a big hole on the right side of the 45. Oh, what a cut inside the 50. Brings it up for a first down at about the 45 yard line. That kid is like a bull, Sean. Gosh, he's just such a big kid. But he's a fast bull. He is. He's got, he's got very deceptive speed also, as Duxbury found out the hard way. Well, third and give me a, you know, a healthy on the, on the goal line with that kid giving him the rock. I'll tell you, that's not a problem. I don't think anywhere in the, in the inside the 10. Sarsani takes a break for the green wave. We're in the big number 56. Joe Tassone, the center, breaks the huddle first, as he always does. Picardi out wide near side. Again, a out, couple of outstanding grabs of Duxbury game by Picardi. But Freeman in motion to give right up the middle to Glavin. Glavin, right side. Glavin inside at 35. He's got the first down there. That's a nice 10 yard pickup for number 31, Green Wave Glavin. He's Didn't, a sophomore. Sophomore. He did a nice job, too, Sean, of holding on to the yeah. ball. The kid had that arm really just tugging the ball. He did a nice job of holding it all the way down. So nice job picking up 11 yards on the play. Kevin, I watched the JV game against Duxbury last week. And I'm telling you, Brendan Glavin was shaking and baking. Some unbelievable runs against a very talented junior varsity Duxbury team. Keep your eye on number 31 in the future as he has pass here for the Green Wave. Vinny Picardi, number 21, out wide to the left side now. One man in the backfield is Glavin with wings on each side. Looks like Freeman on the near side, helping on the far side. It's helping in motion. Counter Freeman play. coming underneath, and that was snuffed out by the Bulldog defense. Yeah. Freeman had nowhere to go. Be a loss on the play. Yeah. But it is a good spot where Freeman just, you know, went where he's supposed to go. And if it's not there, it's not there. We go to the next play. Well, generally, that's a pretty successful play. And generally, it's because people over pursue on the counter play. There, there yeah. was absolutely no pursuit by Canton. I, you know, it literally, like if they just gave it to the first guy on the fake through, I think he would have gone for a touchdown yeah. shot. It just it's, it seems funny. It's like almost like there was no pursuit. They just kind of stayed at home. 6.07 left here in the second quarter. 20 0 Green Wave lead. Every point has been earned by Sean Donovan. Sure, he's going to keep a copy, couple of copies of this tape. Josh Reardon, the quarterback under center, looking to throw. Reardon looking for Bacardi, the down and out. Bacardi right there at the 28 yard, 29 yard line. Very safe little bit of down and out there for Bacardi, number 21. As you said, mentioned just a few minutes ago, Sean had some great catches last week, and I'll tell you, he's got the best uh, pair of hands on this team. Certainly, there's no question about that. Nice, uh, safe uh, play there. Pick up about, what, eight yards, nine yards. Josh Redden now two for two in his varsity career. He had one pass last year, which was a touchdown pass to Brian Dwyer. But that's a great play, though, because, you know, he's not trying to do too much with it. What you're trying to do is, okay, give us a third down that's makeable. Yeah. Now you get a third and five. You get two plays to, to make that five yards. You know, put your team in a great position. So here come the green way up to line of scrimmage, which is the 29-yard line, third and five. Freeman, the deep man behind Alex Tempesta, number 11. Ridden calls the cadence, pitches. Ridden, Ridden looking for, I mean, sorry, Freeman looking for a hole. He finds one, dies four. He's going to be short sure. of the first. Nice making job. Making something out of nothing. They've done a nice job on that left, on the right yeah. side there, Sean, of really of kind the of. defense. Of the defense. Have done a nice job of kind of stopping them, containing on the outside. And I think, you know, Freeman kind of just figured it out there. It's like, hey, if you just go two yards, you know, in of that, inward of that, you're going to have a nice hole. And that's what he did. Nice job. Pick up above three. So fourth and two at the 26. It's almost like they're selling out on the outside and giving you things in the middle there, Sean. Greenway fans trying to figure out what play they're going to run. Patty Chirokas wants to have the double tight eye formation off the right side, but we'll see if that's what they call. Four minutes, 15 seconds to go. We got four, two men in the backfield and a timeout being called Canton. by Canton, I believe. I think this is their fourth. They didn't like the uh, they formation. Didn't have, they did have the double tight end, as you said, Sean. They didn't go with the eye, but that's okay. 4.09 on the clock here, 20-0 Green Wave lead. 
Just to recap, Green Wave kicked off to Canton, and Canton was three and out. They punted to the Avenue 37, and Donovan ran it back to the to the uh, Canton 41 yard line. First play was to Freeman. Second play was a 27 yard run by Donovan around the right end. He just sprinted down and uh, scored the touchdown at 8:35 in the first quarter. The kick was good, making it 77 to nothing. Then again, we kick off to Canton, and they uh, tried a fourth and two at the 50 yard line, but was short by a yard. So the Green Wave took over at the Avenue 49 yard line. First play from scrimmage, Dwyer hit Donovan on a 51 yard scoring strike. The kick after by Donovan was good, making it 14 to nothing. And then after uh, another, what do we have? Oh, the opening kick of the first half was the first the, second quarter. I mean, the, the second quarter, yeah. First play of the second quarter. Where am I? I'm trying to read my own notes here. We had a kick, a return for 53 yards by Donovan. That was on a punt. Hey, when you come down to the field, Sean, it's always the Green Wave Grill is always open, as you mentioned earlier, that Chris is always manning it. And we get some great parents that do a great job, and we get help from Richie Barrett as well to run that as well. So here we go, fourth and two now at the 26-yard line. Ridden looking over his offense, two men in the backfield. Ridden now puts Freeman in motion to the right. Looking to roll and throw. It's Ridden, Ridden tosses it down, and it's complete for the first down to help in the fullback. Ridden could have actually turned it upfield. There was no one in front of him to he get really, that first. He really could have. You know, though, in the end, I think it would have been about the same shot. You yeah. would have picked up the first down. That was a pretty safe pass. You're talking about a five or six-yard pass to Halpin. Nice job of Halpin really protecting it. And that ball was – you couldn't have intercepted that ball. It was a perfect throw, nice, safe throw. First and ten for the green wave. Ball marked at the 19-yard line with 3.45 left to go. Remember, stand by for halftime. You'll see the Abner Green Wave cheerleaders. And then we'll have a special presentation in recognition of the Tricentennial Committee who did such a great job for Abington during the uh, celebration of 300th anniversary. And they'll be presenting a special ceremonial key to the Memorial Trustees. First and 10, Green Wave. They give right side. It's Freeman. Freeman, Freeman Freeman's first got some speed room. Down to 15. He's going to go 10. in. Freeman dances oh, down the side and steps out at yeah. about the six yard line. Nice bit of run in there from the 19 yeah. down to the six. Well, if we're playing on the CFL Canadian League field, Sean, he would have been in. So <laughs> it's, just, it's about, what, two extra yards wider there. He just didn't have enough room on the sideline there. So nice job of Freeman, though. A nice run. He's been running really well today as well. So the Green Wave left first and goal now at the six with 3.23 on the clock. 20 nothing Green Wave lead. Josh Reardon comes in the huddle after talking to offensive coordinator Ed Riley, because head coach is Jim Keller in his 40th year at the helm for the Green Wave. 40 years. 19, what, the fall of uh, 74? 74, I think it was. Fall of 74 was his first year. Reardon now calls his cadence. Give left side to Halpin, Halpin. Left side dives inside the five, down to about the three-yard line. Pick up a three, every second and goal at the three-yard line. Well, it definitely seems like the left, the, the right side, or the left side as we're looking at it, the Canton defense, Sean, is a little bit stronger than their right side. Green Wave have had a lot of success coming on the on this side of the, of the ball for the Bulldogs. Rob Toomey checks in for the Green Wave, along with Owen Leary, number 30, and number 32, Al Freeman, checks back in. Ray Emery, number 43, taking a breather, along with John April. At center right now is Cole Jansen, number 55. Two men in the backfield. That's Tempester and Freeman. A little movement, and they give to Freeman, trying to go on the left side. Gets tied up on his feet, though, driving forward. He's in. Al Touchdown! Touchdown! Man of a again! Al Freeman, Al Freeman, Freeman number 32. Out. For the Green Wave, the senior running back did a nice job of cutting it back up. And we've seen him do that a few times when he's running over to that, shine, that side, Sean, just really doing a nice job of, you know, recognizing what the defense is doing. Offside is declined. And cutting it up and getting the yardage, and he did a nice job, especially when you only need two. That's a good awareness there by Freeman. Good extra bit of hustle there by Freeman. The second effort gives him six points, puts his name in the newspaper, makes the score 26 to nothing for the Green Wave at 229 here. Remaining in the first half, we're playing 11-minute quarters because this is a non-league game. Abington is in the Celsius League large this year. They split the Celsius League in half, so and actually Randolph dropped into the Celsius League. So it's well, let's wait for this kick. It falls down, kicks up. Looks Donovan. wide. wide. No, it goes wide. Got the side of the ball there. Got a little too much side winding action going on there, Sean. It was 
Keeps it, makes it an even 26 to nothing here with 2.29 left to go. Saying the South Shore League Lodge now is Abington, Randolph, East Bridgewater, Rockland, and Norwell. Five teams, so we have four league games, and that, those games are critical because those will help decide who goes to the, uh, the playoffs in the first three weeks of November. Now, the top two teams in the, in the South Shore League automatically qualify for the playoff. So obviously each each game is critical and again the first home the first league game will be the Randolph game here uh, Saturday afternoon on the 28th. Cohasset is now no longer a league game but of course they all count towards power ratings. Norwell is a league game on Friday the 11th. Rockland is a league game on Saturday the 19th which is away. And then of course East Bridgewater here at home on Friday the 25th is our last league game. So especially those Avenue Rockland and Bridgewater are uh, basically picked to be the top teams in the league this year. So those two games back-to-back -back could be critical to decide who goes to the playoffs. Here's the kick by Dunham, an end-over-end -end kick. Going to drop at the uh, 13, picked up at the 9. And Landis. picked up by number 9 by Harris. Harris taken down. Looks like that was DeAndre Hilton. DeAndre Hilton did a nice job, and Landers did a nice job getting down there, but number 22 did a nice job of finishing it off. It's going to be at about the 29-yard line where the Bulldogs will set out at 1st and 10. Just about 2.21 remaining. Now, the Bulldogs have used, I believe, four of their timeouts already, yeah. Sean. So, you know, it's, a, it's where it comes in now. You know, you've got to be a little more, more judicious because with 2.21, if you get something going, you know, it's, it's not a lot of time when you get 71 yards to go. Bulldogs break the huddle, trying to get some offense going here against a very stingy Abbott defense. Harris out wide to the near side of the field. Shotgun formation now for Brian Hagan. Hagan just takes a run right up the middle. sees an opening, and he does have an opening there. He picks up about... Eight or nine, right. and then he just stood up and stopped. Smart move by Hagen. Yep, you see the little bit of a probably the you know the, a little bit of a lane there. Just as soon as he got it, that was a design play. Just re went and ran right up the middle there and got the nine-yard pickup. So it'll be second down and one now at the ball the, the uh, 38-yard line of the Bulldogs. Their head coach is Dave Bohane. Carver usually plays on a synthetic turf field at their home stadium. Canton does. I'm sorry, Canton does. Carver does not. They're no, grass. That's right. Thank you. Three men in the backfield. They put a man in motion. Quarterback keeps. So it's tripped up. I don't think he got it. I mean, it's gonna be, it looks like they're mocking that he did. I think he might have, when he fell forward, he landed just beyond yeah, the... They did yep. give it, yeah, they gave it to him. It wasn't he didn't really have far to go. No. You know, I'm sure all the people at home are going to be calling you out there, Sean, about the, the surface at the Carver High School yes. as well. You know? My apologies to our yeah. viewing fans at home. So first and 10 here for the Bulldogs with 1.30 to go in this first half. First and 10 in the ball at the 39-yard line. Here comes Brian Hagen. Again, three men in the backfield, wide out to each side, but kind of a tight formation. They give the wing. dive man up to wing. He picks up about five. Hagen just kind of reading the block and deciding whether he's going to give the belly hand off to his fullback or if he you keeps would, it. You would think that you would have a little bit of um, the hurry up offense here. Yeah, you would think that they would have a little bit of like passing too, Sean, though. I mean, if you're going to do anything with a minute to go, you've got to pass the ball. Aiden Colley hopes they put it to the air again. Second and three. To wing. Quarterback keeps it, no, pitches it this time, and he's going to be hit in the backfield. No, yeah, no pickup. It's going to be about a half-yard loss, one-yard loss there for the Bulldogs right at the 45-yard line. It's going to be using their final timeout with 40 seconds, 47 seconds remaining here in this half. Ryan Landon, Donnell Leon, Donnell Leon, Colley on the tackle along with Scotty Jansen. Bring up third down, 47 seconds on the It was one of those clock. ones I think they would have been better off giving it to the up pitch man, I mean the up handoff, because they looked like Wing was able to literally run, but they came back off of that and pitched it deep, and the Green Wave had great pursuit. No timeouts left now for Canton. They're getting the uh, play on the sidelines from the, the coach. 26-0 Green Wave lead. It's been the Sean Dunneman Show here in the first half. The Sophomore. The Bulldogs break the huddle now, third and four. Third and four for the Bulldogs. Shotgun formation for the junior captain and quarterback. Drops back, lefty throws it, puts it up in the air. Tenor receivers, nice completion at the 26, 27 yard line. Yeah, Harris just went up and got that nice job by number nine for the Bulldogs. Nice Hagen, threw it up there, did a nice job of delivering to wire. Green Wave was right there. Obviously he did not pick up anything extra. And they just got to wait to set the stakes, set the ball. Yeah. Clock stops at 39 seconds. 
This is where Steve Wakelin can be a hindrance to the Green Wave defense. I know, he's get the clock going. He's Shotgun again for Hagen. Blitz shown by the Green Wave. The handoff right up the middle, oh. but he's taken down. Nice defensive play by, by number 55. Yeah, for that's the Cole Jansen. Cole Jansen doing a nice job of shooting the gap, getting in the backfield there for a two yard loss. And you know, more importantly, Patricia Sean, Lane. it takes time off the clock. Patricia drive, and they down it. You know, it takes time off the clock, yep. forces them to use it down here. So it's going to be third, third and about 12. So basically, they have two plays here to get into the end zone from their own 20s, from the from the 29 yard line. Right, no time, no timeouts left. Good play there by Jansen, just wrapping and drop, dropping them from Patricia Drive. So, Green Wave, you can't ask for any more, Sean. They've just done a great job today on both sides of the ball, all facets of the game. They've really done a nice job of, uh, you know, just taking care of business today against this Canton Bulldog team. 26 nothing with 18 seconds remaining. This guy, we're going to go back to the game here with third down. I don't know, is it a penalty? Apparently there was. Let's see, uh, referee Magnarelli. Putting on his microphone. What? Why did it take him three, four minutes to do that? I don't know. Well, they've updated the record books now. I guess. Shotgun formation for the Bulldogs. Now it makes it a second and about six. Another flag thrown. It's, I think that's going to be uh, movement. But you know, Sean, I think you know it doesn't really matter at this point because you only got like 18 seconds remaining on the clock. So you really have two plays, you know, to, to get it downfield. Maybe three if you're lucky. We have a dead ball foul. Ball start on the offense. Ball start against the Bulldogs. I think referee Magnarelli likes this wireless headset. I think he does. He's got a he's got a voice. Second for it, down, there, Sean. Shotgun formation. Wait a minute, here we go. Are we correcting the downage here? The clock, I mean, is the clock should be 18 seconds? 18 seconds, they're going to set the seconds. clock to 18 seconds? Wanna 18 seconds. Set it to 18 seconds. <laughs> so it's going to be second from the 29, second and 12 from the 29 with 18 seconds to go. They're going to get three shots at this depending on um, how quick they can get it off. Obviously, they're not going to be able to do any running plays. If you do a running play, the clock keeps going, so it need to reset the clock. So we'll see how that goes. So it's going to be second and 12 here for the Bulldogs. Hagen back to pass. He's looking for number nine, Harris. It's, it's going to be, be picked. picked off on the five-yard line. Donovan. Watch out. Donovan. Get a shirt tackle back at the 21-yard line and taken down. Boy, he's lucky there. I know. They're lucky because once he gets, we saw that last week, once he gets out in the open field. I think they're throwing, calling a uh, personal foul against Manning here. I don't know. I don't know. Might have been a rough in the pass call. We don't know yet. Eight seconds left on the clock. One question will be if it happened, when did it happen? If it was during the run back oh, after the change of possession? Let's, let's listen in. We have a personal foul roughing the pass. It is an automatic first down. It was rough in the pass against the Green Wave. So it moves them closer to the end zone. I didn't they really see possession. it, I, mean, I was watching downfield where the pickoff occurred. The ball will be marked at the 14-yard line now. First and 10 at the, with eight seconds to go here in the first half. Green Wave trying to protect a 26, 26 to nothing lead here. Donovan's interception will be erased from the record books. Hagen now lines up in the shotgun once again. He's got Derek Harris out wide left. Well, they're going to have to go for the end Reynolds zone here. Reynolds to the far side. They're going to go to Harris. Throw. Goes early. Nope. Nope. Incomplete. Incomplete pass with three seconds to go. The pass is incomplete. Intended receiver was number 25, Nick Gustaf Gustafsson. 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 Oh, he's from northern Sweden. It's Guf Gustafsson. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm Swedish, so I know, Sean. That's <laughs> <right>. Gustafsson. <laughs> Three seconds ago, this will be the last play with the ball marked at the 14 yard line. Got to get it into the end zone for it to really have any meaning. So out wide right, Derek Harris, number nine, 25, is apparently Gustafsson. 
<laughs> and Ger Jerron Reynolds on the near side, looking to throw, goes down the middle, puts it up in the air, no it's good. incomplete. Yeah, incomplete there for the Bulldogs. So Green Wave and in the first half here, 26 nothing. You couldn't ask for a more perfect played first half by the Green Wave. Nice job. Good job by the Green Wave. Sean Donovan having a great start, uh, really in front of the home crowd here. Really racking up the points and a good job by the Avenue Green Wave D keeping the Bulldogs off the board. We're going to take a break from the microphones and we'll wait for our Green Wave cheerleaders on a special presentation at halftime. the new Memorial Field entrance gate in honor of all of our veterans. This recreational and community area known as Memorial Field was purchased and constructed by the town of Abington after the end of World War I and has been under the constant care and control of the Abington School Department and the Board of Memorial Trustees. Memorial Field is a special place here in Abington, a place where generations of families have gathered over the years for games, for fireworks, for town celebration, and for ceremonies of all kinds. And we thank the men from our Abington Highway Department who worked so hard during the past few weeks to again prepare this field and its surrounding areas for the season's upcoming game. Standing at midfield today are members of the Board of Memorial Trustees who are also joined by representatives of Abington's Tricentennial Committee. In just a minute, we will take part in the official presentation of a ceremonial key to the new Memorial Field Gate, which was recently completed at the south end of Memorial Field. However, we would first like to recognize and thank the volunteer members of Abington's Tricentennial Committee, who organized various activities and events throughout the past year and a half to lead the celebration of Abington's 300th anniversary. From the Tricentennial dinner gala to the field days and fireworks to the Civil War reenactment at Island Grove, in the publication of the Tricentennial Historical Book, every event that the Tricentennial Committee organized was a tremendous success. And we owe a large debt of gratitude to these volunteers for hosting the year-long celebration of our 300th anniversary. Please join me in offering a round of well-deserved applause for the following members of the Tricentennial Committee after I read off their names. Co-chair, I don't think is present today, Frank Genowitz, along with Jim Prowell and Jack Bailey. Members Robin Fennell, Bob Kelly, Nancy Reed, Mike Franey, Kathy Bailey, Joseph Shea, Phyllis Wheatley, Russell Wheatley, and Rita Wing. Let's hear it for this group. <laughs> the success of our tricentennial celebrations would not have been possible without the efforts of these volunteers, and we would also like to thank all of those residents and businesses who contributed to the Abington 300th anniversary celebration. Your generosity allowed for all of Abington's families to enjoy and celebrate the history and community of Abington. Now, the 300th anniversary has come and gone. It is tradition for a town to leave behind a legacy gift for future generations on the occasion of a centennial celebration. Working with the Tricentennial Committee, a legacy gift committee, comprised of Mr. Kevin Donovan, Mr. Sean Riley, and Mr. Gordon Sweeney oversaw the design and construction of the new Memorial Field entrance gate. This new brick and rod iron entrance was constructed with private donations as a legacy gift to future residents of Abington. And on the occasion of Abington's 300th anniversary, 100 years ago as part of our town's 200th anniversary, residents donated and constructed the Memorial Bridge and Memorial Arch at Island Grove, both of which were dedicated in memory of Abington's veterans of the Civil War. Today, the new gated entrance to Memorial Field pays tribute to our veterans of all wars, and as a community, we again join together to enjoy a football game on these hallowed grounds. 
Special thanks are extended to Mr. Glenda Point, Mr. Chris Kane, and Mr. Scott Lyons, the family of Bob Donovan and the Slaney family, for their extraordinary efforts and contributions towards this Memorial Field project. We are pleased now to welcome at Midfield some representatives from our Board of Memorial Trustees who undertake the annual responsibility to maintain our wall memorial and to remind us of all, man, excuse me, of all of the many Abington residents who have sacrificed their lives as members of our armed forces so that our families can continue to live freely and enjoy the pursuit of happiness. Mr. Charles Whitman and Mr. David Peterson could not be with us at today's meeting. But please welcome the other members of the Abington Board of Memorial Trustees. Mr. Bob Pratt, who is our veterans agent. And our chairman of the Memorial Trustees, Mr. Bill Ignani. A black green plaque on the new Memorial Field Gate now proudly and permanently proclaims that Memorial Field is dedicated in honor and in tribute to all those Abington residents who bravely served our country to protect our freedoms. At this time, Jan Powell and Jack Bailey of the Tricentennial Committee will present Memorial Trustee Bill Vignani with the ceremonial key to Memorial Field Day. <laughs> On behalf of all the veterans of Abington and their families, we trust that the Memorial Trustees will accept this ceremonial key and the newly constructed Memorial Field Gate as a legacy gift in permanent honor to our veterans. We sincerely hope that residents of Abington and surrounding towns will continue to walk through Memorial Field Gate for the next hundred years and that Abington will remain the land of the free and the home of the brave. Thanks for the unselfish service and dedication of Abington soldiers and sailors. Thank you for your attention and thank you again to the Tricentennial Committee and Legacy Gift Committee and the Board of Memorial Trustees for helping us all to celebrate Abington and enjoy bringing our families together once again at Memorial Field. Back here for second half action with the Green Wave leading 26 to nothing. A fresh 11 minutes on the scoreboard clock. 22 more minutes left of play time in the game. Nice ceremony at halftime. Some well-deserved recognition to the Tricentennial Committee and the Board of Moral Trustees. Well, really, the entrance to this facility the, uh, really looks very nice, Sean. They did a very nice job. And every year it seems like they make some more improvements to the uh, facility here. And it looks very nice. It's something Avenue can be proud of. Here's the kick from the Bulldogs. End over end kick. And it picked up right at the 24-yard line. Looks like Zach Glavin, it is Glavin. Glavin, right side, Glavin trying to get to the sideline, still on his feet, and then pushed out of bounds. That's number 31, that's Bradley Glavin on the return. So the Green Wave will have good field position once about again, the, what, about the 42? Well, Sean, I think, um, you know, this is going to be like kept on the ground. Yep. You know, I think it's going to be, uh, you know, great. Abington's got uh, 22 minutes here. It looks like there's a little bit of threat of maybe thunder showers coming in here, Sean. If the sky is right blue right now, but the wind has picked up. And it looks like to the west is uh, a little cloud, a little darker. They're predicting some uh, pretty nasty thunderstorms and heavy rain later this evening. Let's hope it is this evening. This game did start at 4 o'clock for Triple E concerns, but also worked out that we're able to hopefully avoid the thunderstorms. Here come the Green Wave now, first and 10, right to left across the television screen. Dwyer hands off to Freeman. Freeman with a hole around the left side. Freeman pulls his way up to about the 47-yard line. Nice job of the Green Wave there. Nice job of the Green Wave. There's going to be a personal foul on the Green Wave. Sterling Garvin made a nice tackle, but then came up jarring at Freeman, which was just oh, absolutely was, unnecessary. I, I think the Avenue kid like, just kind of pushed, like, get away from, you know, from, I don't know. Oh, so it is against Canton. It's against Canton. Wow, good. Because the Abington player just kind of put his hand on him, like, you know, get away. And, yeah. you know, I thought he was going to call him for that. but No, one of uh, Freeman's, well, let's see here. Well, it's probably, it's good you do that, I think, at this stage of the game. I'm going to call a late hit. Yeah, right. That's a big penalty. So with a five-yard pickup, we add a few more onto that. It brings him into the 38-yard line now, first and 10. Well, when you really haven't stopped him on a drive yet, Sean, I don't think that's a, uh, a good thing to be doing. Greenway break the huddle. Picardi out wide right to the far side of the field. Halpin lines up behind Brian Dwyer, the junior quarterback. They put Donovan in motion to the right. Give coming back the other way is Emery. Is that Emery? Yes, it is. 43 for yep, Emery. 
Ray Emery. He's a junior running back. Picks up maybe about a yard, maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. The clock continues to tick down, just about 10.30, so. Green Wave uh, has faced with second and 10 here. They're calling the 50-50 number uh, tonight. Whoever wins the 50-50 has a choice between taking the cash or a pair of Red Sox Yankees tickets. So it pays to be here to support Green Wave football, part of, be part of Green Wave Nation. So where are the seats, Sean? Uh, these are, I believe, some good seats right out near the bullpen. Great view of uh, the bullpen and the field, 11, 11 rows off the field. Wow, that's nice, nice seats. Again, Picardi out wide right to the far side. Oh, two men in motion, flag is thrown. Broken play, but Donovan keeps it now inside. Gets it nice inside cut. his 20. Donovan's going to be ridden down at the 15, but it'll all come back. Yeah, Donovan, obviously Donovan was running the right play, I think, and I think somebody else was in motion. Shouldn't have been because two men in motion without setting. is against the rules unless they both come to a stop before the snap. And unfortunately, that's not what happened there. We have uh, some of our hydrology management team coming up to visit us in the booth. I'm hoping there are, yeah, there are a few guys still down there on the sidelines taking care of the water needs of the Greenway football team. They're just here visiting for about 10 seconds and then they have to skedaddle back out. So it's gonna be a second and about 15 here for the Green Wave at the 44 yard line. 40, 43, yeah, the 43 yard line. Second and 15 with the ball at the 43, as Kevin was just mentioning, 9.39 on the clock and rolling here in the, se in the third quarter. Dwyer is back out at quarterback for the Green Wave. All right, Picardi now puts Donovan in motion. Did I say Picardi? Dwyer looking to throw. Dwyer puts it up. Looking for Donovan. Donovan goes out of bounds at the 12-yard line. Falls incomplete. Good well-run route, but just ran out of real estate there in the corner. Good spiral there thrown yeah, by was, Dwyer. It was good spiral. It's with the wind at his back there, so. I think the public address announcer, Tom Dion, is going to let some of our water boys say their names over the public address system in just a minute when there's a break in the game. So this will be a thrill for all the fans in the stands. Absolutely, this is the, what they came for, Sean. Yeah. So third and 15 here for the Green Wave. You know, Kev, I was- Dwyer getting the play from uh, Coach Riley. I was concerned it wouldn't be a, a good crowd here with the early start, with some people couldn't get out of work, but there was a pretty good contingent here at Green Wave Nation. Hey, you know, they, they travel well and they're loyal, Sean, they get here no matter what. Certainly are. Ridden, that's Nate Ridden out wide to the near side. Picardi out wide, we got slots on each side. Looks like a throwing down here for the Green Wave. Donovan in motion. Dwyer calls his cadence back. Drop it's a play. draw to, to Halpin. Face mask. Halpin inside the 40. Halpin trying to get inside the 35, still on his feet. Halpin driving. Fire Halpin he drops the ball. ball. And it is going to be still a squirm. I think it might can. I don't know. A lot of bodies in there, a lot of green and white. A lot of green. It can has it. Can't say they have it, and they do. They re recovered it about the 28-yard line. Tough break there for the Green Wave. Yeah, when that play, Sean, if because of the screen, what happened was everybody was on the loaded up on the right side. He came back across the grain, so he was really the only one out here. He didn't really have any downfield blocking at all, was doing it all on his own. Probably tried to do a little bit too much. Just would have been a little bit short of the first down, so a nice effort, though, by Halpin. What, what Riley is that? Jack Riley, Jack. Ned Riley, Mike Riley's down there too. Whoa, 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 they gotta fall down the stairs. Settle down. Uh oh, I think, I think. I think Tom Dion just opened a can of worms that the hydrology team might be up here every game now looking to announce their names. But they had a lot of fun doing it. So, First Canton at the 27 yard line. Gave up the middle, That's nothing doing, doing That's it wing. They went right back to what kind of worked a little bit for them in the first half there. And that was wing right up the gut. And there no doing right there. The Green Wave doing a nice job. Manning was there to stop. And it looked like Jonathan April was there too. John April's just a big boy, Sean. Number 74 for the Green Wave. Ring time. Senior. He's been playing since, uh, you know, he's had a great sophomore season. Obviously, he was great on last year's 13-0 Super Bowl team. So did a nice job for the Green Wave. See some of the plays out there right now in the middle is uh, uh, Matt Whalen, number April, 51. Yeah, number 85 is uh, Sarasota, I mean, uh, not Sarah Sonny, Quinlan. He's 56, 85 is Quinlan, of course, so doing a four. James Landon here on the near side of the corner. We got uh, Ridden deep in the, as a safety with Picardi. Second and 10. 
they keep quarterback him. keeper, he's right, going to the right, right side. Right. And he's going to be hit by Landers with help from is that Picardi or Ridden? Yeah, one of the Picardi. Green Bay players got sucked in, Sean. He thought that the ball was handed off, and, you know, Hagen did a nice job of just keeping it and ran right around him. Fakes that belly handoff, and since called quarterback option where he either. He pulled it out, and he pulled right. it out and came right back around the corner and did a nice job for about a 12-yard pickup. Bill Davis, our cameraman, probably gave you a great view of that, along with Norm Casely on the uh, sidelines. I'll tell you, the work that those guys do, it's just unbelievable. They have a lot of dedication by Norm putting it together, but Bill is like Mr. Dependable there for all the Green Wave sports. Unreal. First and 10 at the 40-yard line. Similar formation for Canton. Nothing snazzy. They just come right at you. Give on the right side. Nice job hit. Sarasani kind of sealed it, and then it was taken down by number, who's that, number 20? Looks like Johnny Kearns. Johnny Kearns, but number you know, number four, Reynolds on the carry. It's Greenway doing a nice job, just giving up two yards on the uh, on the play here. Well, one thing, Sean, you wanted to make sure that the Green Wave did that a little bit better this year, week was taking care of the ball, and they've kind of done that so far. Obviously, they just had that one fumble, but last week I think they had, what, four turnovers. Yeah. You know, and you're not going to be in many games with four turnovers. To be in that game against that team, you know, with four turnovers, it was a great testament to this kid's, these uh, kids' skill level. I was proud of the Green Wave la last year. Despite the score, I really think they, they took a victory home against Duxbury in the form of how well they played. They give right up the middle, handoff is to King. A wing, I'm sorry. Wing number 45. Brings it up to about the 47-yard uh, line. He's not related to the uh, sub galley uh, air, is he? No, he's not. Okay. At least that's what I'm saying. I'm sticking to it. Remind you all game schedules for all the Green Wave sports teams. In fact, all the high schools are at MIA.net. Just look on, click on member school look up in the top right hand corner. You can choose what school you want to look at and then you can choose what sport you want to look at. Well, you know, Sean, one of the things too is like, you know, people might be going, hey, you're up 26 nothing. Why isn't the second string in? But you know, they really don't have a second string. All these kids play all the time. You know, and it's, it's you know, when you have, oh, oh nice, nice stick there. Who is that? I think Manning's at the bottom of that putt. No, it's not, is it? I think it is Manning. Manning did a nice job. I think it was that was Rob that Toomey, no, number 75, also clogging Toomey up. Toomey in there, number 20, came right up the, the gut there for the Green Wave, I think, too. It's Kernsey. Kearns doing a nice job of really just filling that hole. Flying into that. It's a nice job of the Green Wave. No pick up there, so it's going to be fourth and about three here. But these kids play both ways, and, you know, it's, so it's you, you know, you've got 38 kids on the roster. You know, they're all playing, so it's... That's right. And they want to get... You know, this the first string out there to, to get used to playing a full game too. They you know they got to get in shape here early in the season. Absolutely. They have a bye week next week, so there's no game for the Green Wave in the, the third week of September. We their next game will be again home Saturday the 28th at four o'clock against Randolph right here at Memorial Field. Can't go Fourth, for it. And a long three. Long count, trying to draw him offside, and it, they're not going to draw him offside. So Canton calls the timeout, and they'll likely bring out the punt team. Yeah, nice job by the Green Wave, being disciplined there. Remind you, Saturday, October 19th is the Booster Bash. Stop picking out your costumes right now for the Booster Bash. Saturday, October 19th at the KSC. Tickets are $20 a person. Talk to any member of the Green Wave Boosters for more information, but especially you can ask Karen Reardon or Ann Kearns who are helping to organize that fun night. Also, if you're looking for more information about the new Abington School Project, look I at... Know what my, I know what my costume's going to be, Sean. <laughs> what is it going to be? Uh, I can't tell you. Uh, it was nice. Then don't interrupt me. No, right. I'm like, <laughs> look at www.asbc.us, abingtonschoolbuildingcommittee.us, asbc.us, for more information about the new school project in Abington. All right, I'll tell you. What is it going to be? I'm going to be you. I'm just going to have a microphone. That will be my costume. <laughs> <laughs> Okie dokie. <laughs> All right, let's see what they do here now. They got a shotgun formation with a fourth and three at their own 47. No, he's under the center. What am I thinking here? It's a, oh, Wait, he, he, he might have made it there. I think he did make it. I think he's going to be right there at the Just 50. Just got to get over the white paint of the 50-yard line. I think with 26 nothing, Sean, I think they're getting that first down. Yeah. It's, wow. That is right there. It's not stretched out, but they're giving it to him. First down. Yeah. Number 31's father, Jimmy Glavin, just won the 50-50. Oh, good for him. I'm not sure if he's taking the money or the uh, Red Sox tickets. He's got to take the cash, wise, wise move, so he can take his lovely wife out to dinner, I'm sure. Or maybe he's buying pieces for the team. Who knows? So 26 nothing here, and once again with 4.55 remaining in the ball game, first and 10 right at the 50-yard line for the Bulldogs. Green Wave doing a nice job of shutting them down all afternoon. Gonna, well, it's going to pitch it out. 
to Reynolds, number four. Reynolds gets the edge and comes down to about the 40 yard line, just short to about the 41. It's gonna bring up about second and about one there for the for the Bulldogs. Jaron Reynolds got some pretty good speed as a junior running back there for the Bulldogs. He really does. He got out that edge shot and was able to kind of turn it up and turn up field. So it's gonna be about two yards away from a first down. Cole Jansen and Rob Toomey come off the field to take a breather along with Vinnie Picardi and Lucas Sarasani, second and two now at the 42 yard line. Well, it looks like the Green Wave like uh, hydrated a little bit better for this game, Sean. They certainly did, and I'm sure they will for the rest of the season. Bulldogs break the huddle, now they do come out in a shotgun at second down. Hagen just got to run right up the middle, but he's Nothing hit in the it. backfield. Nice job by the Green Wave, that's Manny coming right up the gut along with April and number 85, Quinlan again, so. Nice job for the Green Wave. I think you're gonna hear those three a lot working together this year with the quickness of Manning, just the bulk and the strength of April, and Quinlan's got, got it all. He, he, he can do it both. He's a big man, puts his hand up, knock down balls, but also can just get around defensive ends very quickly. You know, he's a senior. He hasn't really been out for the team prior to this he's year. A right? player, he's a hockey player. He's a hockey player. He's an athlete all around. I guess they've been trying to get him out for several years, came right. out this year, and it looks like it's uh, work, working well for the Green Wave. Could pay off for the team and the player. Third down, two. They give up the middle, quarterback keep, dives Does, forward, and gets he gets the first. The first. Yep. Just barely, though. Yeah, just able to, nice job. They tripped him up in the backfield, but he was able to so stung, stagger for the first down just at the 40-yard line. So they'll move the stakes. Ian Barrett and who, Michael Donovan? Michael Devaney. Devaney oh, huh? Devaney, all right. Another Patricia Drive first in there. All right, first and 10 for the Bulldogs. Just under three minutes to go here in the third quarter. Quarterback keeps, back. goes He's the wide throw, open. down the middle of, of the field, and it's going to be a touchdown for the Bulldogs from 39 yards out. A scoring strike to Derek Harris. You know, though, Sean, that's one of those things where I, that's one of those things where I think they just lulled them to sleep. They've been running the ball, running the ball, running the ball. Harris ran a nice seam rope, and Haggard did a nice job of just delivering that ball right on the money, wide open for the for the first touchdown of the Bulldogs today. So Harris gets into the end zone and puts six points on the board for the Bulldogs, and the Bulldogs will line up for their point after attempt for the 26 to six score at 2.44 left to go. So Coach Dave Bohain sends in the play. Let's see if they go for two, Kev, here. They didn't look like they, their kicker that they kicked off, Sean, didn't seem to have like a real strong leg. Right. So they get wing, they come out with their, their offense, their normal offense, they come play run all the time. Yeah, so. wing in the middle at the running back, they give to the second man through trying to get around it's and it's gonna be... No, he's not gonna get in, nice job by Garvin the Green Wave. Up. Stopping him right about the two inch line there. Green Wave just came up. Who's that, Halpin did a nice job of just like really sticking him and driving him back there. Nice job by the Green Wave D, not giving up that uh, two points. So as they come back upfield, it'll be 26 to six to score with 2.44 left here in the third quarter clock and the Canton Bulldogs will kick off to the Abbott and Green Wave. They'll put the return team out there for what the, really the second time. The second time, right, they get the ball, receive the ball this uh, beginning of this quarter. Remember this, this game is brought to you by our sponsors, the Depot Restaurant on Railroad Street. I want to thank the O'Donovans for all the support for Green Wave football. Of course, the Avenue Greenway Boosters, Mike and Dave's Barbershop in North Avenue, in North Avenue Center. Bernie Brannigan, the chiropractor's his, uh, his office located right across from Mia Ragaza. Hey, if you're Funeral. walking crooked, he'll straighten you out. That's right, Quayley Funeral Home. I want to thank the Quayley family on Adams Street, Old Town Real Estate, Roger Woods, former fullback for the Avenue Green Wave. Glenn LaPointe family, we've had a couple of generations of LaPointe playing football. Deanne's Restaurant, Mike Kokomasi, always generous to the Avenue Green Wave sports teams. Bemis Drugs, since 1905, serving the needs of Abington families. The Laura Office of Sean Riley and Ed Riley. Abington Bank, a huge sponsor and supporter of all things good in Abington. Midway Auto, Mike Devaney, very generous. Again, donated the Green Wave van for all the teams used. And as I mentioned to start off, let's go back to the Depot restaurant. Here we go. Here's the kick. A little squib kick, nice job by Lyons. Picks it up, Lyons at the 40 yard line. Gets buried there, but good job. By Mike Lyons. Nice job of feeling that. Dave you know, Lyons, I'm sorry. Well, it's really Mike's hard because it's like your blockers don't know. They're kind of going back thinking that's going to go deeper, Sean. So he did a nice job, though, picking that up and getting a few yards. To give Green Wave nice field position here at the 43 yard line. Going to be first and 10. So 
So two minutes and 39 seconds remaining in this third quarter. Green Wave up 26 to six against the Canton Bulldogs. At quarterback is number three, Brian Dwyer. Dwyer, first and 10 now. They give her up the middle to Halpin, and I think it was Halpin. Halpin got a little bit of a push yeah, there. Picked, picked up, up a two or three a, there, two or three yards. Well, that's the kind of yardage I think he likes to pick up, Sean. I think he likes the contact. He's a tough kid. You know, it's great about this team, man. We saw Halpin really doing the bulk of the damage on the offense last week. This week, I think they're giving him a breather and trying to make the other guys get, you know, get prepared for the rest of the games this season. So they haven't had to use help in a lot, and he'll well, be ready in the upcoming games. I think games. they were concerned because of last week with the issues that they had with cramping. And, yep. you know, part of that is overused. So I think they're really trying to rotate kids and try to keep them, you know, manage them a little bit better. Donovan with the ball. Picks up body yard. Yep. Bulldog defense, wrapping and grabbing. Turned out to be a pretty good night here, or a pretty good afternoon. It is a nice afternoon. Whereas earlier in the week, they were predicting the severe thunderstorms in the afternoon. We were worried we were going to have to move the game to another day. And that was going to be difficult with all the scheduling conflicts. But then the uh, thunderstorms basically backed off and they'll be hitting us later tonight. The sewn out over the ball at the center. Picardi out wide near side. Got single coverage with Jerron Reynolds on him. Dwyer under his center. Dwyer looking to throw. He's rolling to the near side. He's got some pursuit, though. Dwyer now pulls up, throws it to help him. Oh, what a play. Completing the 42-yard line. What nice job play. by the big fullback with some good hands. First down for the Green Wave. Absolutely nice job by the Green Wave. Nice execution. And he literally waited to the very last second before he could throw the ball, Sean. Nice job of Dwyer reading that and just really bringing in the defense, really thinking they had him, and then dumping it off to help him. And that's tough running against the grain there, throwing across your body as a quarterback, but a good job. Yanni Papadopoulos is down right now. Hopefully it's just a, uh, a cramp like we saw last week and not a, a severe injury that can't be recovered from quickly. If you would like to, if you follow Twitter, you want some information about upcoming games for all the Greenway sports, you can follow Twitter at Abington AD. Our new athletic director, Pete Serino, uh, will give you updates as we go along throughout the season. Green Wave soccer tied the East Bridgewater Vikings, boys, one to one. They beat Cohasset with goals by Mariano, Robbie McClafferty, and Brian Macaluso, that's right. Pam Ryan up here in the booth. Pam who does it all for the boosters. If you'd like to help out the boosters, we meet once a month at the Abaddon Police Station in their community meeting room, which is a great place to meet. Bill, we're gonna take a timeout as they tend to the injured player, make sure that they take as much time as they need to help them out and that everyone gets hydrated. We'll be back with more Green Wave football action in just a second. Oh, you were at the, on the Greenway in town? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I think I saw them doing that. I think I saw them. Oh, yeah? They did a little clip or something, like yeah. different things. People All right. We're back now for third quarter action. Yanni Papadopoulos looks like he might have hurt his ankle, so the uh, Abaddon Fire Rescue is here to take him to the South Shore so it brings out first and ten here for the Green Wave. If you don't remember, it's uh, help and just got the first down. Eye formation. Bit. Looking to throw is Dwyer. Dwyer sets it up for Halpin down the 30-yard line. Halpin still on his feet, pulling his way down. Halpin all the way down inside the 22-yard line. He's tough to bring that? down. He had three kids out there, Sean, and that looks like a nice little route that the Green Wave has going on there. You know, a little bit of a, he slides out in there, kind of just, you know, out into the flat about seven or eight yards down. But Dwyer rolling with no pressure. Dwyer just easily able to get that ball out to him. Nice job. What a weapon for Halpin, the big bowl of a running back. If he gets the handoff, he's dangerous. But then if they give, the, give him the fake, He's dangerous out there with the receiving end. He's got the nice, sweet, tender hands of his mother, you know? I don't know. Uh, Alvin's had a great job. Serving all that food at the today. depot. So Dwyer with first and 10 at the 22-yard line of the Bulldogs. 40 seconds left to go here in the third quarter. Give right up the middle, helping once again, pushing his way through. What was that? So it's going to be second and about. That might have been Tempesta. Well, Alex Tempesta, number 11 with the, with the carry. 
yeah, it's about a one-yard pickup. And brings up second and nine for the Green Wave, Sean. A little Kevin, loud there with the, with the, the band, Sean. I can't I hear you in my ear right now because when we turned off, I think something might have turned off upstairs, but now I can, I believe. All right, there we go. See that? Bill Davis is good. He is good. Well, thank you for... Uh, that's the end of the first third quarter here, so Green Wave coming into the fourth quarter is up 26 to 6 here against the Cam Bulldogs. They'll take over when the fourth quarter starts at the 21 yard line with a second and nine situation. Hey, kudos to Coach Kelleher for a class act here. I mean, Abington scored three times in what, four plays, I think, in, in, the, in the first half. And, you know, they really could have done some serious damage on it. Sean Donovan was on fire in the first half. We had a 27 yard touchdown runner on the right side. Then he had a 51 yard pass reception from Dwyer for a touchdown on just, I think, was the third play from scrimmage. And then he then, uh, Sean Dunham returned a 53-yard kickoff, I'm sorry, 53-yard punt return with some tremendous blocking from his teammates for his third touchdown. And uh, that was only at the 10.01 10 mark of the second quarter. So that was all within about 12 minutes. Right. I know. It was 20 to nothing. And since then, it's become a 20 to six game after uh, Al Freeman's three-yard touchdown with 2.29 left to go in the third. Now Freeman had a nice run prior to that, Sean, getting the ball down to the six. Had Sorry, a nice the second. Run. So the Green Wave doing a nice job both offensively and defensively. The only last they had was that uh, nice seam route that uh, Harris ran for the Bulldogs who was able to pick up a uh, touchdown there for them. So Green Wave doing a nice job today. That was a good pass by Brian Hagan, the Southpaw, Southpaw quarterback. Well, the Green Wave is facing going south here, but there is a south wind coming out. That's, that's right. Pretty, that flag is at full tilt right now, so it's a pretty strong wind we have going on today. All right, the chain's not set yet. The ball's at the 21. They're going to hold it up until the chain's is set. Looks like the uh, uh, yeah, chain is tangled there. They're just trying to untangle. It should be second and nine, though, right? Wasn't it second and nine? So okay, that's right. So he's got it on the wrong stake, I think. They got to, I think they got to mix it up. O'Donovan's got to go on the other side. There we yeah, go. They, geez, Kev. It was like a, it was this like an MCAS question. That Abner High School education proves yeah. well, right? Once again. <laughs> yeah, those kids from Weymouth, you know, you just can't trust them, you know. Ball's on the 21 yard line, second and nine to go. Well, this is kind of like their first game shot, so it's a little preseason for them as well. That's right. Know? Get back into the swing of it. Tempester in the backfield, along with looks like that might, yeah, it is Lions. Lions gets the ball, Lions over the right side. Lions, nice cut inside. Lions still straight inside the 10 yard line for the first down. Nice job by Lions. Number David Lions, the, green line. the sophomore. He had a big game in the, in the uh, JV game out of the backfield also. Well, that brings it down for the first and goal down to the nine yard line. Well, actually, Lions' is, um, family, they come from uh, Canton as well, Sean. Little known fact. His dad, That's okay. His dad, Michael's a, a Cantonite. His father's a Hall of Fame hockey player at Canton High School. Right, uh, now we're making stuff up, I guess. Yeah, okay. MSU. First to goal at the nine. Give, right side. That's Landers. Landers driving to the five-yard line. Well, his, 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 his father's real claim to fame was that my wife's locker and his locker were next to each other. <laughs> so it's going to be second and goal from the five-yard line here there's, for the Greenway. There's a lot we could say about his mom, but she's too nice. We she won't embarrass nice. her on the air. Exactly. Maybe another game. Second and goal at the five-yard line. Greenway break the huddle. Got Landers in the backfield. Along with Tempesta, Alex Tempesta, number 11. 11. On the left side, number uh, 35, 35, Donnell Leon. And outside wide is Ridden. Dwyer drops the ball and then jumps on it. it. You got it about the 10 yard line. I think Dwyer just wanted to give himself more of a cushion for a possible pass into the end zone. Do you think he wanted to put it into a passing, uh, <laughs> putting in a passing situation here? He clearly had the snap. It was after the snap that he lost the handle of the ball. Right. Just third and goal at the 10 yard line. Nine and a half minutes left to go here in the game. Green Wave up 26 to six. The second game of the season for the Green Wave. Opened up against a Division II Duxbury team, the first time we played Duxbury in 30 years. And uh, we were, we lost the game by a touchdown and the game, as you know, Kevin, ended oh. on the one yard line with time, ran off the clock, we ran out of timeouts. It was a thrill, what a great game. And yeah, Abaddon held, uh, held their heads high walking off that field. Goal to go, give to Leary up the middle, really not a lot for him in there. Owen Leary, the sophomore running back. They've got a uh, bevy of sophomore running backs, it looks like there, Sean. A lot of talent, and these guys, of course, play both ways. Leary Lavin, does a good Donovan, job on the defensive Leary. side. 
if uh, memory serves me, I think Lions had an interception in the uh, JV game. Good crowd on hand here now as more, more people are coming as they're getting out of work. It's with eight and a half minutes left to go in the game. The actual time is well, now could coming be cheap to 6 o'clock. Because you can get in free after halftime, Sean. I don't know. One or the other. Well, I was giving the benefit of the doubt, Kevin. Okay. You can throw them under the bus if you'd like. Okay. Sean Riley, Kevin Whalen bringing this Green Wave football action with Bill Davis high above the field on the camera and Norm Casely down there on the sidelines. Again, we got Tempester and Lions in the backfield, number 11 and 27, respectively. Looking to throw is Dwyer. Dwyer He's now got some rolling. Room. Dwyer looking for Reardon in the corner of the end zone. Reardon, Nate Reardon, touchdown! touchdown! Reardon! Oh. Muskegon! What a great throw and an even better grab by Reardon. Going away, using every inch of the end zone for six points. Yeah, that was a nice play, nice throw, nice touch throw. Reardon doing a nice job of just running along the back edge there, Sean. That's and right. really giving him a good target there. Well, that nice. was a great job by the sophomore tight end, Nate Reardon. He didn't stop running, Kev. He just kept and kept increasing his distance from the from the defensive backs and Dwyer you know being a good teammate saw it come and just let him perfectly well the other thing is too Sean what happened was to the, the linebacker Dwyer did get on the outside probably could have come close to running that ball in but I'm gonna be a little off sides there could have you know probably almost could have run that in so the defender almost I think hesitated thinking that he was gonna win and then threw the ball nicely and a great throw by Dwyer offsides <laughs> So it's 32 to 6 here. Green Wave looking to pad that up by a point here with Donovan kicking the ball and looks like DeWire is the hold. Make it a yard and a half shorter for Donovan's attempt here. Manning will do the snapping. Number 66. Good snap. Ball's down. Kick is up. That's good. And that's wow. going to land on the pitcher's mound. Just into the wind, Sean, still. And that's a good, that's a good boot. 33 to six, the Green Wave up. 33 to six with eight minutes remaining here in this ball game. Green Wave doing a nice job of really putting this game away here. So really taking care of business, Sean. I mean, you always wonder how teams are gonna react to a loss like that. And you know, they've really come out here and just played a great game. I think they're trying to send a message too to some of the social league foes that they were 13 and 0 last year. They were Super Bowl champions last year. They lost 15 great uh, seniors last year, but they're ready to come back and play. As they say, we don't rebuild, we reload. X, absolutely. And what's the other thing they say? Tradition doesn't, doesn't graduate, graduate here at Abington High School. You stole it. So you took the words right out of my mouth, Sean. Sorry to steal that from you, Kev. Good crowd here from for Abington Green Wave Nation. Everyone heading back to the depot after it as a tradition. Kathy O'Donovan makes a fine pizza and a nice cold drink. And here we go with eight minutes and three seconds remaining. Want to thank all of our sponsors. The O'Donovans are here in the crowd, of course, cheering on their, their son, Brian O'Donovan. But Midway Auto, Abbott & Bank, the law office of Sean Riley, Bemis Drug, Dan's Restaurant, Glenn LaPointe and family, Old Town Real Estate, Quayley Funeral Home, Bernie Brannigan and Chiropractor, Dave Nisby of Mike and Dave's Barbershop, and, of course, the Greenway Boosters. Here's the kick. Uh, a line drive kick, so he lets it bounce. Oh, he's lucky to catch it on the five-yard line. That's Harris once again with it, trying to turn the corner. He's got Harris some speed. Carrying that loaf of bread down the sideline and then knocked out of bounds. All the way from the five goes, good job down the sideline. Yeah, he had some speed there. He got a little in the open there, and Green Wave did a nice shot. Finally getting him out about the 41, yeah, right on the four. It's going to be first and 10. Ken's in a tough Hockamock, Hockamock league. That is a tough league. You have Foxborough. Is there big and small, Sean, in that league? There are, well, it's broken down to the Davenport and the Kelly Rex leagues, mm -hmm. and they are in a league the Davenport lead with Milford, Oliver Ames, Stoughton, Sharon, and Foxborough. Oh, Canton and league. Foxborough are D4. The rest of them are all D3 teams, Division right. Three teams. Of course, the other side of their league, there's six Abington more teams. Only, Abington only had 10 players, so they called time out there. The uh, other side of their league is Franklin, King Phillip, Mansfield, North Attleboro, Attleboro, and Taunton. I saw Franklin play uh, earlier this year in a, in a scrimmage, and they are a, a high-powered D1 team. The alma mater of who? Franny Allen. Oh, New Balance, Fran and, well, another yeah. Christian, foot. Christian Allen's son of, yep. So, want to say hi to all our fans in London, the Allen family in London right now. Sure, they're getting these games on DVD sent to them. And I know that uh, these games are now shown through other towns in the Shell Show. We had a nice comment from a fan in Marshfield who was attending the Duxbury game. Want to shout out to all our fans outside of the Abington. 
Watching Green Wave football. Uh, Hagan with the keeper. He's got it on the left side. He's still on his feet. And look at him making the extra effort, getting the 11-yard pickup for the first down. Doing a little shake and bake there, Sean, to pick that up. He's got some moves when he gets out into the open field there. Hagan does, number 18. He's he done does. a nice job. I mean, I think his arm is not the, you know. And he does a great job of, you know, using that fake, that belly handoff, making a quick decision. No, he really does. He handles the ball in this offense. This is not an easy offense, uh, and he does a nice job of really kind of running it here. I want to thank Abner Fire Rescue for coming by to help out the injured player, making sure he gets the highest of quality care. Wide out to each side now, first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Quarterback keeper, he's knocked down by his own man from behind. I thought he almost got the wind knocked out of him. I know. Hagan's been calling his own number there quite a bit. He looks pretty tired, though, too, Sean. He's taking a big hit. A lot of hits today, number 18 for the Bulldogs. One also mentioned the MichaelaFund.org. September 21st, I believe, is that fundraiser? That's right. It's a fundraiser for Michaela Guerriero. Um, if you look it up, it, I'll give you that website just a second. Well, some of the alumni from last year's Super Bowl team showing their Super Bowl rings are here. Shotgun formation, they throw into the flat completion. This Reardon ran on top of him along with help from Nice who? coverage by uh, Nate Reardon, number 82 there. Who got him at low there? It was a good play. Nice Reardon did number 82 for the Green Wave. Oh, he got him high. Someone else got him. I don't know if it, it might have been Landers coming up. But the MichaelaFund.org, and Michaela is spelled M-A-K-A-Y-L-A, -A -A, so it's the MichaelaFund.org for more information about the fundraiser for uh, the Michaela Guerrero Memorial Benefit on September 24th. But more importantly, all the money they're raising is going towards not only suicide prevention for all the different grades in Abington, but also for any Abington student who would like to play sports and either can't afford the user fee or can't afford some of the equipment, uh, they would be glad to help pay so the kids can play. Keep, keep it by the quarterback. Once again, he dives forward, be short of the first down. Lunges for about an extra three yards there, Sean. He got tripped up at right at about the 44-yard line. He was able to lunge for a uh, extra three yards, making it a fourth and one here for the Bulldogs. Well, so we, they we're go coming down just under six minutes to go here. Uh, get some players' game. There's one obvious ones we haven't. We didn't even pick last week, I think. Just, we didn't. It was just too exciting right up to the very end. Usually we have a few minutes to think about it here, you know. But uh, last week the action was right up to the very last second of the ball game. Here we go now. Fourth and one at the 40-yard line. See the quarterback keep. Nope. Gave a handoff right up the middle. It's wing. Gets plenty there. Gets the first down. Moves the stakes. So it's going to be a first down there by wing. A little Any extracurricular activity down there by the Bulldogs, I think, Sean. I didn't see it come. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I was but that's all right. Reading. I want to mention, any family out there, any uh, any athlete who would like to play Avenue Green Bay Sports, there is a $175 user fee. And if it's something that's difficult for your family, as a lot of families have difficult times, if you contact the athletic director in Abington, the boosters will pay without asking. Uh, we don't need names. The athletic director will get all the information they need. It's completely private. Oh, nice, nice completion pick. down at the 10-yard line. Again, the completion to number nine, Derek Harris. Done a great job getting into the air and taking that out of the air. Uh, at the 11 yard line they mark it down so if you if uh, anyone is interested in playing a sport they simply think they can't afford you can talk to pete serino at 982-0070 it's 982-0070 and ask him what what uh, funds are available uh, there's private donations to make sure that any kid who wants to play sports in Abingdon can play sports quarterback keep right up the middle he's brian this hagan kid. has stepped up i'll tell you he's gonna Stood be up. one sore kid He's going to be one sore kid, that's for sure. He's uh, he's earning it. He's been running a lot. He's really taking a lot of licks. What it's going to be a long season. If this is their offense, Sean, and he's like t getting 30, 40 carries, I'll tell you, he's going to be like a week old banana by week four. <laughs> I want to thank uh, Glenn LaPointe, Chris Kane, Scott Lyons, uh, and the people who served with me on the Legacy Gift Committee, Mr. Kevin Dunham and Gordon Slaney, for all the work on the Memorial Gate. If you haven't seen it, drive down near the Beaverbrook School. It's beautiful. Came out great. Gave up the middle. Uh, no, it's a quarterback. Keep up the middle. Nice fake. Gets it inside the, to about the five. So picked up about three yards on it. It's going to be third, third and four here. They still can pick up a first down if they get the ball down to the one-yard line as we come down under four minutes here remaining in this ball game. Getting back to the Memorial Field entrance, the uh, the new gate, it's brick and wrought iron with some nice black granite plaques. All of it was donated with private funds as a legacy gift to the future residents of Abington, much like what they did at the 100 years ago at the 200th anniversary when the residents uh, raised private funds to build the arch at Island Grove and the bridge at Island Grove. 
that being the community gathering place 100 years ago, this being the community gathering place of present day times. So it'll be here for many, many years to come. I gather down the grove still, Sean. <laughs> Give up the middle to Wing. Wing driving forward. He's going to be, be just stuck. short. It's going to be, I don't think he has the first down where he's marking it either, Sean. He's down about the two. So it's going to be fourth and one from the two yard line. You are right, Kev. Again, if you want to follow Abington Sports, get all the updates for schedules and scores. Follow them on Twitter at Abington AD. Abington AD, for, standing for athletic director. In upcoming games, Saturday, September 28th against Randolph, right here at 4 o'clock, Saturday, the 28th of September. Fourth and one at the two. They pitch right side, trying to get around the corner, and it's going to be a two-yard. That's two yard. 23 there, bringing the ball in for the kin is Garvin. Sterling Garvin. Sterling Garvin, number 23 for the touchdown. At 2.29 left to go here in the game. Abington, uh, Kevin Abington really I think, had their way with Canton today. They showed really how strong they they played against Duxbury and how strong they played against Canton. So I, absolutely, the Green Wave has done a nice job, Sean, today. I mean, uh, their first team really did a nice Clock job. Clock was rolling there. Yeah. So they did a nice job of, uh, not that anyone's complaining. Uh. 2.29 was the time of the touchdown. Yeah. Yes, it was a touchdown at 229. Yeah. We're just talking to the clock operator. I have it we written down. It. We got it. We got it. Right. Yep, we got it. So they're putting 229 back on the clock. And we'll go with the point after conversion. It looks like Canton went for two last time. I suspect they will do it again, Sean. But, you know, the Green Wave, their first team really looked strong today. Both sides of the ball for the first half was uh, – really they really controlled this ball game line of scrimmage you know really showed a great speed really kept uh you know nice up at number 25 there for the bulldogs with a catch and that's gustison <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh you know but the green wave did a nice job on both sides of the ball they took care of the ball in the first half sean and that's exactly what you wanted to see this week uh bouncing back from last week a tough loss you know great effort but tough loss so the green wave moves to one-on-one -on -one with 229 remaining in this ball game Randolph, again, will be our next game on the 28th. Randolph, not a strong program, but Abington's got to kind of keep their focus because right after that, th that Randolph game actually is a league game, so it's critical that Abington get the victory. Then we're going to travel away to Cohasset on Friday the 4th at 7 o'clock. That technically is not a league game anymore because they are in the South Shore League small. Then we go through three league games, Friday the 11th at Norwell High School at 7 o'clock, Saturday the 19th at Rockland at 3.30 in the afternoon, and then Friday, October 25th, here in Abington against East Bridgewater at 7 o'clock. At the end of October, all of the teams will, su will submit their records to the MIAA. The top two teams in each league are guaranteed to go into the playoffs. We are in Division 5 South, which has 16 teams. The top eight teams of those 16 teams will go into playoff games for the first week of November. The bottom eight teams will go into a kind of a round robin of non-playoff games for the, the three weeks in November. So playoff games start that first weekend in November. If you win the game, you go to the next week, which will be another round of playoffs. And then the third week, we'll of course have the same schedule for Thanksgiving, which will be a home game against Whitman Hanson for the Green Wave. And the only teams that will be playing after Thanksgiving will be the 12 teams that will be playing for the actual state championships on December 2nd at Gillette Stadium. There will be six state championships. It will be actually the winners of the North-South Division versus the winners of the Central-West Division for the state championship. Well, this, this completely has, new format. Right, this has taken them several years to get to this point, Sean. They tried to put it in place a couple of years ago. It was shot down, and it's uh, it's been a really a battle to get become a, a real playoff system. It's a two-year trial. See how it works. The onside kick. Going to take a nice bounce, and is. Number 27, Lions, the good hands people, picking it up pretty easily and adeptly. Oh, nice assertiveness there too, Sean, of coming up and like, taking care of the ball. So nice job. You know, Sean, the other thing too is I think it's, this is one of those things where, you know, if you lose one game in the regular season like Abington did a couple times, yeah. you know, you still have the opportunity to move forward in the playoffs. So I really think that it's a, it's a fairer system. It gives more opportunity to the kids that should be playing a little bit deeper and have an opportunity to go to the Super Bowl to do that. You know, it's not. It gives you more than just one bite at the apple. You're right, Kevin. It, you know, as I said, it, it gives not only the first place team the automatic bid, but the second place team gets the automatic bid. So you're going to have a couple teams vying to. You know, if you can't get first place, then you can still battle for second place. Right. And then anything can happen in the playoffs. 
Ball at the 42 yard line, first and 10 with 2.25 left here on the clock. 33 14, Green Wave. It's been all Green Wave all night pretty much. Kearns at quarterback, gives the handoff to the right side. It's number 35 for the Green Wave, Donnell Leon. Donnell, Donnell Leon, not to be confused with Dion. It'll be a second down, a good or, pickup. Or the Kings of Leon. Pick up a four on the play. At center right now is Shane Sullivan, number 61. Shane. Currency at quarterback. Hand off left side. Lions. Not much there for Lions. Just gets it back to about the a little bit behind the original line of scrimmage. Bring up third down for the Green Wave at the 45 yard line. The clock continues to run down to 135 and rolling. Our sub galley player of the game is going to be an easy decision this week. It's going to be Sean Donovan. Three touchdowns in about 12 minutes of time. I think at, with four or five touches of the ball in the first half. Just he scored three different ways. Well, Sean, I think. Sean, we got to do the players of the game. I think, you know, obviously you've done it. I already. All right, all right. I got the second one. Then. You, you can took pick the, the second one. one then. That's you, right. So I'm going to give it to number 33, uh, Halp, and he did a nice job there today, running like really some tough yardage in there, did a nice job of running. Owen so Larry on the carry. Give it to number 33, Halp. And well, and he deserves it for the, what he did last week, too, because that was he did an outstanding game. So we were in arrears in our uh, That's player right. of the game last week, so we have to make good on that. So it's bringing it up fourth down with 49 seconds remaining here for the Green Wave. I want to mention, I thought a nice touch is Patty Chirokas is leaving right now. Brandon Chirokas was here uh, with Patty at the beginning of the game when we let the, the uh, balloons go. I don't know if you noticed, but Brandon was wearing his dad's high school, Abington High School football jersey and number to be here uh, in memory and a tribute to his dad. And I thought that was a great classy touch by Brandon. So kudos to you, Brandon. And the Chirokas family. Of course, we remember Tommy McGuire, a classmate of mine in Abington High School. He volunteered for 15 years here with the team, and the kids loved him. He was great on the sidelines, just very inspirational. But Mark was a year ahead of me and uh, was, a, was, a, was a very good athlete and was, a, was just a great person. He did a nice job for the town for, for so many years, so he'll be missed. Fourth and five, Glavin with the handoff. And that's going to be the last play of the game as we come down. It's going to be three seconds, two, and that's the ball game. Green Wave, 33, Bulldogs, 14. First victory of the 2013 season for the Green Wave. A very impressive start, and you know, and we were wondering how they'd come out after that Duxbury loss. Would they come out firing? Would they come out sluggish? And Kevin, they answered right away. They yep. came out firing. They really did. They just looked fast. They looked good. They looked crisp. They really looked like they're in midseason form today. So nice job by the Green Wave. So the final score here, Memorial Field, the Green Wave 33, the Bulldogs 14. We have a bye week coming up, so the next game, as we mentioned throughout the game, will be on Saturday, September 28th, 4 o'clock. A home game here against Randolph. And then check your schedules for the remaining games this season. we got a lot of exciting football left in this 2013 season. My name is Sean Riley. He was Kevin Whalen. Our cameraman is Bill Davis. Norm Case on the sideline. I want to thank, thank Chris Nagel for the 4.2 minutes that he was on the air with me earlier. Team's out there shaking. Congratulations to Coach Jim Kelleher. Stay tuned for more Green Wave football. Get out there and support the Green Wave soccer teams, football teams. A lot of great things going on at Abington High School. We'll be back at the next game, and thanks for tuning in here.